in life is knowing the Lord and walking in his way. The most glorious pursuit of mankind is walking in God's image and likeness. It is our utmost desire that you will be richly blessed as you listen to this message from Living Scroll Ministry, aka If the Bible Network. For more life transforming messages, please visit www.livingscrollministry.org. It's the life that flows from the throne of grace. Can we welcome Pastor David Abu Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I see our excitement in the house. Can we, in that spirit of this excitement, can we appreciate our Father? Can we thank Him for the gift of life? The precious, precious gift of life. The gift of relationship. The joy of life. Amen. Praise the Lord. All welcome in Jesus' name. Before I proceed, I would like to consider. Uh, consider. Praise the Lord. Welcome once again in Jesus' name. I want to appreciate you guys all, the Lagos team. You always receive us as uh, receiving the face of God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Please, can you appreciate yourself? Can you put your hands together once again? Must always remember our beginning to start my appreciation this morning from the very man that God used to bet this meeting, the meeting we do in Lagos. When I came 2018, I came here for a course. And he said, How can you be here? I will not do, a, let's have a meeting together. And then we met in Lekki that time. Please, can you join me to appreciate uh, Jobani? We thank you so much for, for igniting a fire that is born into today. And then Kimberly was there too. I spoke to Kimberly and Femi. Everybody came together and we started. Kimberly, can I appreciate Kimberly? And his twin brother, uh, Collins. Praise the Lord. And then after that, uh, God has used uh, Pastor Femi Olajibu to take the meeting to another level. Take it to another level. Where is Pastor Olajibu? I saw him here yeah, just now. And then with Sister Tos in the wife to join his strength together. Let's appreciate them. Amen. You see, every sacrifice is seasoned. Praise the Lord. And I want to appreciate the man God used to season the meeting that we've been doing as well too. And he said, the person of Elder Kunle Aregbeshola. I can't forget one meeting we came. That was two years back. The, he wore the church he wore. We did the spirit of wisdom. And in that shirt, he wrote the spirit of wisdom. We still have the picture today. today. Thank you so much, uh, brother, my friend. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. I know the children that came with him. Can we appreciate them? Praise the Lord. Pastor Mecca is not here, but he's, at the same time, he's still here. Amen. But there's no difference between him and a Chisholm. Chisholm, man. Amen. 
the issue is that my brother that he loves it. I say the problem he has that he loves God too much. You can appreciate her, bro. She's only came with the wife. She the man. And she the man too, alright? She the man, she the man. Amen. Came with she the man square. And they are little baby as well. Amen. Praise the Lord. So appreciate, bro. Lola day too. That, uh, and then Pastor Daniel and the wife. And then, bro, Jeremiah is here too. You can appreciate it. Amen. I miss my sister so much, but she assured me she was going to be here yesterday, and I'm seeing her here today. That's uh, Sister Dairu. She's here. Yeah. It's been a long time I've seen her. You're welcome. Praise the Lord. And also, my in law is in the house before she collects uh, the, the sister from me. Please come and appreciate uh, him. Amen. Mr. Bola. <laughs> Are you people? You're welcome. There are brethren that came from Babwaya. Are they here? The brethren from Babwaya. Okay, they are seated there. Can we appreciate them? How about brethren from uh, Nifes? Are they here? Okay, Nifes. Please can we appreciate them? Amen. Also, some brethren came from Akure too for this meeting. Bro, Dami, please. Bro, Ujima, bro, Fidelis and uh, Sister Becky, bro, Bola to is here, all the way from Akure. Just I want to show them once again. Amen. And I want to especially appreciate Pastor Tosin Alimi for the strength he put in this uh, work. Sorry, what I'm doing is part of the meeting. You know, when Paul is writing his epistle, you know, he will start listing them name by name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I just follow the order of scripture. Amen. Pastor Tosin, thank you so much for everything, for the labor. And then I will have, I know I'm seeing a lot of us here. I may not know your name now, but I want to appreciate you for being around. Please, can we join, uh, join me to appreciate everyone that is seated here? Then there is this, uh, my brother in fact, I don't know if he's the one seated there from Ibadan, right? To Lagos. He's the one, Abi. Uh-huh. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. I, just, I, see your, I see your work. He's a minister of the gospel. And uh, thanks for coming as well. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please, and this special appreciation go to everyone that I did not call your name. Please, can you stand up and appreciate them? I think I will stand up and appreciate everyone that did not mention you by name. Ah, see this, my brother. <laughs> okay. Welcome. Okay. You are all welcome. Praise the Lord. We've been doing this meeting for some time now. And just simply talking about the Holy Spirit since. Uh, October 2020. That's uh, nearly uh, nearly three years now. We've done a lot. We did the seven spirit of God, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of mind, the spirit of understanding, then the spirit of the holy fear of God. We took it as the spirit of worship. We did the spirit of the Lord. Last time we did the spirit of truth. The messages are there for those of us that have not listened to it. You can. They are available on uh, YouTube and on our website. We did the Spirit of Truth, and today we are looking at grace and the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. And uh, before I go, I would like to tell us that uh, is it any time God wants to do something big for you, He will demand something from you. Praise the Lord. So don't be afraid when uh, this uh, box that you are hiding me behind, Amen. Don't be afraid when God maybe made a demand on you. I want to repeat it. Anytime God wants to do something big for you, God will demand something from you. Praise the Lord. And then, uh, why be all through all through scripture? 
there are certain things that God can give you. But anytime one going to give something that will, that will be tied to your destiny, and then that will be attached to your work on earth, he will come and demand something from you. And when he comes like that, don't be afraid. Praise the Lord. And then uh, God demonstrated this world. And then there are what we call sovereign demand. There are some demand that God will want to get your buy-in. He tells you to do one or two things. But there are some that God do will demand sovereign. And then uh, if you look at, uh, I want to use uh, Adam to illustrate this story. Praise God. God gave him a lot of gift. Did a lot of things for him. But when God wanted to give him the, one of the most significant gifts in his life, God demanded something. Praise the Lord. And then God, God did not ask his permission because the first demand that God made from man, God ensured that he did it, he injected his sovereignty into that demand. Sometimes God can ask you to do something, he wants your mind, he wants your body. But the first demand that God made on man on earth, God did this sovereignty. He did not require the impute of that man. Amen. And what was God demanded from the man? God demanded his relief. God took the relief and then he returned something back to him. What did he return back to him? Eh? He returned the woman. And in that demand, he didn't ask for the man's buy-in. He did it in his sovereignty. He pushed the man aside. He said the man fell what? To sleep and then he took it sovereignly. But when he returned it back, what did he return? The woman. Amen. God took my reef and he gave me one. Amen. Can you appreciate my wife? So when God wants your reef, open your shirt, say take all. Because once he takes it, when God takes anything from you, when he brings it back, it's not going to be the same thing. Amen. I call her sweet, sweet love. That's my wife. Thank you so much for your love. He said, these messages are new every day. And yesterday, we renewed our love. Amen. We mind for 13 years, but yesterday was another renewal. We renewed our covenant of love again. Not by taking any oath or no, not by swearing. We just by having conversation. And seeing how we can deepen our consecration to love. Amen. Thank you so much for the love. Thank you for all that you've done in my life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. And I love you so much. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I say that, uh, Becky, anytime God wants to demand something, eh? Amen. Look at the story. I say anytime, all of those things, God did the vegetation, everything, right? But all of those were gifts that God gave man. But in all of those creation stories, the most significant gift after outside of the life that God gave man was the woman that he gave Adam. But to give Adam the woman, he demanded something from him. And the same thing I say that when it comes to your destiny, a lot of things God can do for you. But the matter of destiny, God will place a demand for you. Abraham, God came. God has been speaking to him and God wanted to elevate him. What did God do? God stretched forth his hand. Give me your son. Abraham put one son in his hand and gave it to what? To God. But what did God return back? God carried the nation. God held the nation like this, right? And he brought it to Abraham. He took one son. So sometimes, so one time, go ahead, it's difficult. I didn't know. So that, that's why I say, you see, God, you know, what God did, that God prophesied to us. Genesis is just prophecy. It's like Genesis before man sin. Genesis chapter 1 and 2. The first two books in the Bible, first two chapters of the Bible, right? I've said it before. That in the first two chapters of the Bible, man was without sin. So a lot of things they are prophecy. Right? And there are four chapters in the Bible that man is without sin. The first two chapters of the Bible, Genesis 1 and 2, and the last two chapters in the Bible. Now them are full of prophecy. So, so God asked Abraham for what? For son. And God carried what? His vision. You see, Joseph was there. Jeremiah was there. Elijah was there. David was there. God carried them and brought them back to Abraham. And God did not stop there. Say, as many of us that are of the faith of Jesus, you and I seated, we are now Abraham's children. Can you see? Can you see who your father is? Amen. It's an amazing and an awesome God. So anytime a demands of obedience is coming, it's difficult. No, 
Anytime God is asking you for something, he doesn't need them. God, this is the principle of life. God wants to take you what? God wants to lift you high. So to do something defining in your life, God will stretch forth his hands. Praise the Lord. When he wanted to annoy Moses, he said, Moses, what is that in your hand? Right? He said, what? Because he rod, But that rod became the rod of God. He didn't collect it back from Moses. It was Moses that was holding it, but it was not the same rod again. You know the story of Elisha and that woman? He said, the, the last meal, we want to eat it and die. He said, no, go and cook something for me. Praise the Lord. Can you appreciate your father one more time? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So today we are looking at grace and what? And the Holy Spirit. Now we, you know, uh, the things in God is like onion. They are layers and layers. Sometimes God takes us deeper in light. The things we know before, he takes us deeper in the knowledge of those things. Praise the Lord. And I'm trusting God that, uh, you see, the path of the just is like a shining light that shines what? Brighter and brighter. Today will be brighter than the days that were gone. And tomorrow will be brighter than what? Today. It happens in the place of light and revelation. Just let's open up our heart and then look at the grace and the Holy Spirit world. All that we know about the grace, we want to reappraise it and look at, at it again and draw sufficient light strengthen the light that we have so that we can join in the race that is before us because the road is very long. Praise the Lord. So what is grace? Let me ask you. Grace. See, now we're the only one talking. Do I have a second mic? Okay. Grace. Sir? Sir? <laughs> okay. You see, you see, that's the name of my wife and that's true. That's, it, that's true. Grace. Amen. My wife is Grace. So, <laughs> all right, who else again? Oh, I should just continue. Okay. All right. Okay. Sister Shidima, can you give her the mic? I think grace is your merited favor of God. Thank you so much. That's the word I'm looking for. Or merited favor. So we want to open up. Uh, that's the simple word. It's what we've always known. We want to open it more. And see it in the light of God some more. Praise the Lord. So I want to do a little illustration. You know, and uh, the three people that sang that, that led our choir worship, please, I want them out. Uh, three of, I want to use it to do an illustration. Then me, they me call up uh, Zachariah chapter 4, verse 6. I want to use one scripture to illustrate uh, grace and the Holy Spirit. Okay, you may, okay, he's not here, right? Call him. Okay, that means please join them. That means we can stand there. Okay, can we read that scripture together? Saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord host. The next verse. Thou, O great mountains, before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain, and it shall bring forth the stone there with shoutings. Grace, grace unto it. The next verse. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. And you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. The next verse. Who has despised the days of small things? Shall rejoice. And shall see the plummet in the hands of Zerubbabel. With those seven, they are the eyes of the Lord, which shall run to and fro through the earth. Now let's go back to verse uh, 6. Okay, Lolade, please come. Please, are we following now? Just carefully watch this little illustration we're doing. Now, this is Zerubbabel. Right? And then, look at what God told Zerubbabel. This is Zerubbabel. This is a this is a mountain, right? So this is brother Lola, let's say Zerubbabel. This is the mountain, and then this is the Holy Spirit. So now, God spoke to Zerubbabel. Say, this is the word of the Lord unto what Zerubbabel. Say, not by what might, not by what, but by not by power, but by my what spirit. Now 
from the next verses you read, we are talking, we are reading Zachariah for those of us who are online. Zachariah chapter four, verse six to ten. Now, if you read downward, you saw that he his hand began the temple and his hand was going to finish it. Now he was telling Zachariah that whatever you this that you are going to do is not going to be by what? By might, not by what? By power. So God took Zerubbabel and then immersed him into the spirit. Praise the Lord. So now, this is Zerubbabel initially, right? So if it is Zerubbabel, then Zerubbabel can address the mountain as Zerubbabel. But what God did was to take Zerubbabel, immersed him into what? The spirit. So now, the Zerubbabel that is coming now, to the mountain now, is no longer what? Is the same Zerubbabel? This is the spirit now moving. Praise the Lord. So that's why I say the next verse. You look at the next verse together. Say, who are you, O great what? Mountain. Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and it shall bring forth the headstone. That means shall finish the structure thereof with shoutings, crying what? Great. What is the cry? Great, great. So the Zerubbabel that is now coming now is the spirit moving. So the simple definition of grace we want to give now to strengthen the order we know before that grace is the spirit moving. So the Zerubbabel that is coming to the mountain is the spirit moving. Inside Zerubbabel is the movement and the motions of the spirit. And before that movement, see the mountain will not stand. I want to appreciate them as you sit down. Now you want okay, okay. Now, and then uh, if you look at the first reference to grace in scripture, when the grace was ever mentioned in scripture, it's Genesis chapter six. You see, no have found grace. When the Bible says the Lord the earth was corrupt and uh, God regretted that he had made man on earth. Genesis chapter six, he said, But no have found grace. In the eyes of the Lord. We're going to read that scripture as well. The verse 1 to 7, we say God there uh, was verse 7, Genesis 6 7. And the Lord said that we destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping things and the fowls of the earth. For it repented me. God was sorry that he has made man on earth. He said, But Noah found what? Grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah did what? Noah walked with God. He said, in grace is your partnership with the Holy Spirit. I want to explain it. Is it unmerited favor? It is unmerited favor. But what is the content of that unmerited favor? Are we together? Grace is what? Totally unmerited favor, yes. But what is the content of that unmerited favor? And I said that grace is the spirit moving, the motions of the spirit. You see, everything that God does with man related to the human life, the human world, and everything is the rock, the bedrock of it, the foundation of it is the motions of the spirit, the movement of the spirit. So you cannot talk about the grace of God and not talk about partnership with the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. That's why, again, I say grace is the spirit moving. I will look at the three motions of the Spirit in our lives. Let's talk about three motions, three areas that the Spirit of God moves. You know, the three dimensions that He moves and operates in our life. Again, grace is not that one, you know. There are so many definitions of grace, okay, maybe in relation to maybe sin, okay, God forgives and by grace, by grace and stuff like that. Grace is a very, very deep word. That's why the whole dispensation of the New Testament is called the dispensation of grace. So that our understanding of grace will not just be skewed that uh, okay, uh, uh, okay, by by God's grace, God does it. Uh, this and that. grace calls you into full partnership with God. And then even God Himself, if you look at from the story of creation, you know that's where we even be. You see, I said I told you Genesis one and two is full of prophecies. He said, and the spirit moved. Genesis 1 to say the earth was without void and dark and dark. He said, and the spirit of God was moving. You see, there were motions of the spirit. And then the word of God came. He said, let there be what? 
life. But preceding that speaking was the motion and the movement of the spirit. That God got things done on earth. The false works that God did on earth. You see the, you see the motion and the movement. You see the Holy Ghost was moving there. And then God uttered his word, let there be this, let there be that, and everything was done. And if you go to Psalm 33, that he said, by his spirit, he garnished the heavens. Listen. And then if you looked at uh, the New Testament, or everywhere in the New Testament, the life of Jesus, from uh, his birth, you see, Mary, you see, the Holy Ghost shall what? Overshadow you. And that holy thing that shall be born inside shall be called the Son of the Highest. Even when Jesus himself, when he was physically on earth, he could not begin his public ministry and his purpose until there was the motions and the movement of the Holy Ghost. God is going to be in partnership with the Holy Spirit. Grace is very, very demanding. It's a tall, it's a tall order. Demand from God. Don't forget what I started. God will the most significant thing that God will do in your life. God will demand from you. Grace will help you to meet those demands. When God is beginning to place certain demands of maybe instruction, it could be as little as anything and it can be as hard as anything. Praise the Lord. Bible says Jesus was uh, in Luke chapter 4, verse 1. Jesus returned from Jordan full of the Holy Ghost. Then he was led into the wilderness by the Spirit. And then he returned back from the wilderness in fullness of power. I see how his public ministry began. This was even Jesus on earth. And then if you look at scripture, it says nobody can say Jesus is not except by the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians 12. Paul will tell us that I'm all that I am by what? By the grace of God. Now, you see that, that reference to Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was going to build. And God told him that I'm not going to do it in strength. You are not going to do it by might. God took Zerubbabel and immersed him into the spirit. And so the Zerubbabel that was coming was the spirit moving in him. And then he said the hands of Zerubbabel laid, look at it, grace. He laid the hands of Zerubbabel laid the foundation of this word. And his hand is going to what? Finish it. His hand began the building and his hand is going to finish it. And then the same thing you say, no, I want, no, I found grace. You know, in the eyes of God. He said, no, I walked with God. And then the next verse, that scripture we were reading, look at what the Bible says the next verse. No other found grace. I said, and Noah walked with God. God. Verse 13. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. He said, Make you an ark of gopher wood. Can you see? He said, Make he was going, now going to build. He was going to do certain things for God. He said, and verse 13, I said, and this is the fashion. This is how you are going to make it. What did Noah find? What did Noah find? That's why in Exodus 32, God told Moses that you have found grace in my eyes. So grace is not a sit back. It's not just a sit back, a lead back. Oh, but God will just do it all. You see that? So under the dispensation of grace, you know that we are living under grace now. And then it's not just liberty, per se, liberty. Grace is a very easy calling. Not just that, liberty, per se. Praise the Lord. So you can you see how these things relate together. I want one person to tell me what you have. Please, a mic. What, you, what have you gotten so far before we proceed? All right, anybody? Anybody? Okay. You tell us your name and then... Uh, My name is Richie Joshua. Okay. What else do you something? Amen. Can we appreciate it? <laughs> Amen. And then, uh, you see, that place we read Zachariah for. Now, look at the young boy that spoke to us now. Who is the Lord? The person that is young today is the person that will be an adult what? Tomorrow. And uh, that's why I say you shall not despise the days of what? beginning. That's why my heart always goes for children. Anytime I see what? Young one. If I have an opportunity to sit down with an adult and a young one, I'll sit down with the young one. The younger one. Praise the Lord. Yes. Because of the potential and the possibilities that are there. That's why I always appreciate the work you are doing. Uh, Elder Kuni, the Lord strengthen you for this work more. The Lord continue to give you grace. 
The Lord give you longevity of life. In Jesus' name. Sometime in 1985, Jonathan was a copper. So when you meet him, you meet a young copper. By 2010, he was sitting as the president of Nigeria. In 1984, Bush was a young, was a young man working at another company, Bush. And by 2000, he became the president of the United States. That's uh, the younger Bush. You know, we have two Bush that were president of America. The younger one. In the 84, he was an oil, cop, an oil worker. And, and then by the 2000, he was sitting at the president of the United States. Sitting in the place of power and influence. And his own father, that the senior Bush now that was president. In 1944 or 45, he was a pilot in the U.S. Army during the Second World War. And the... They went on a mission, almost like a one-way mission. And then, you see, sometimes it's good to have a good heart. They went on a mission to doing the to bomb part of the one island, one Japanese island. And when they went, they ran out of fuel. So he told these people to eject out of the plane. So they were ejecting into some island that they saw. The plane was running out of fuel. It was 20 years then. He was an Air Force officer. So. They ejected, so he now remaining him. And then when he was across the Atlantic or so, so he had to, those ones should eject to the island. So he was ejecting into the open sea. So he fell into the open sea after allowing those ones to go. So he moved the plane. So when he fell into the open sea and he was on the sea, so he was there, of course, no help, nothing. So he now saw a very big movement under the water. You know that fear factor. Maybe someone is going to eat him or something. So he was sit on the water, and then later he now saw that the submarine came out on top. America was looking for their soldiers, those that may not have made it. And this is a country. So before you insult them, they are doing gay. They are doing this one. Please, amen, amen. He said they took a host. You know what he moved to move the submarine. He said they were looking for their soldiers. So when he felt the water was moving under, maybe a big fish, shark, or anything else, he said, now saw a submarine came. And then they came, they put, they said, what's your name? He said, I am George W. Bush. Amen. But by 19, uh, the late 80s, 89, the man became the president of the United States. Praise the Lord. You see life? Amen. So the person you meet today that is 18 years, you meet the person in the next 20 years, you don't know what you might see. Praise the Lord. And also goes to a lot of us that labor in the lives of young ones, uh, evangelists. Femi, he lives in Akure, but he has a mission outpost in, uh, in Ligo. Please, can we appreciate him? You see, when you labor in God, you don't look at today. Praise the Lord. Because uh, those that those are small children, when you want to look at your result, impact, you are looking at what you are doing now. You are looking at what is coming out of you. You are seeing impact and results. The labor in the kingdom is a very long labor. Praise the Lord. It's a very what? Long labor. You do it with the heart of eternity. And you do it with eternity in view. Some people can labor in the land. The fruit of that labor may not grow until 120 years later. Abraham labored to have a nation. But that nation was not born till after over 400 years. So if he was going to look at the things he has done and accumulate results here and there and gather them together, I say until the labor of Abraham, the, the visible result, even in the natural, did not show until after over 400 years. Praise the Lord. So where were we before we... Okay, who else again? What did you get? And then I will go to the next phase of what I want to say. To illustrate this message, I just defined it, but to illustrate it deeper. Hallelujah. You tell us your name and then. My name is Peter. All right. So I am great to be here to be made of the man of God. Thank you so much. Sir. All right. Okay, bro Ajay. It's a long time I saw this, my friend. Amen. I'm not even sure whether you are the one I was contacting. I've not seen you for a long time. I was not sure. That's why I didn't call your name. Okay. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Uh, my name is Tony Ajay. So what I, what I go so far is that. We understood grace to be the numerated name of what we can already define in person. But so far, I've understood it to be the working of the Holy Spirit because it is the grace that is carrying us to the Amen. 
It's not that they thank you so much, appreciate him. It's not that the grace is kind. That walking is what we call grace. Are we together now? The grace of God. Now, okay, you see, like, oh, I just sat down here. I saw food on my table. Grace of God that brought it. Amen. So, you see, it's walking. Grace is walking. That's why I say the motions of the Spirit. Jesus will not tell them, tarry you in Jerusalem, right? Until there is the movement, of the, until the Spirit moves. So when the Spirit moves, we now learn to move with Him. You see the dispensation and the order of grace. He said, tarry you in Jerusalem until what? Until the Holy Ghost came. Don't push my gospel, don't do You have zeal, they are fired up, they are ready to go. He said, but wait. Because grace is the Spirit, what? Moving. Moving in us and also we moving in the spirit so jesus finished all the labor the sacrifice but they will not even start preaching the gospel you see, until the holy ghost came you see they were all in the upper room in acts 2 and then there come a mighty rushing wind and see they went then the new creation was activated on it you see you see, you see again you see our partnership with the holy spirit you see that dispensation of grace now let me the next phase of what I want to say now is what he has already pointed out now. Now, you see, what God wants you, what God tells you to do, and then what you want to do for God. Praise the Lord. What God tells us to do, and then what sometimes you want to do for God out of your passion, out of our own volition, that is easy. But sometimes God wants us to do certain things, that one is not what? Always easy. I'll give us a very practical example. Okay, I put it this way. Say the commandment and then the voice of God coming to you in person. You see where and where and how deep we always need this grace. The grace and this partnership with God. I say the commandment, I won't explain it deep. I'll just mention this one in passing. Maybe at another time when we come, we could teach about the, the three dimensions in his voice, you know. Now, the commandment, there's a voice, the one that comes, uh, you know, the voice of God comes in commandment. You give a general commandment, the ten commandments, everybody do it. Everybody do that one. Uh, this one maybe gives us the law, or certain things Jesus taught in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all of those going. These are the when God gives us his, his voice in commandment, which is generic, is general. So all of us are fitting, trying to fit into it. Say, love your neighbor. I want to love my neighbor. You want to love your neighbor. All of us are fitting. To it. That's one aspect of the voice of God. When the voice of God comes to us in commandment, gives us commandment, give us status, give us things to, then there is another voice that comes to you in person. The things he tells me are not the things that you will do. Are you hearing me? The things he, will t- he tells me in person to do are not the things, it's just like uh, when God met Abraham, he told him to kill his son. So another person stands and I want to go to Mount Moriah to kill your son. Does it happen that way? Eh? So this is that's why I say the voice of God in what in person. I'm bringing a message home now. Please, I want our own divided attention. All of the things we are doing was to lay prayer. The voice of God in commandment, which is the generic and the general commandment that God gives us, and then the voice of God in person. Praise the Lord. I say the commandment is general and the voice is personal. And then uh, if you look at this man. Most times, we, we, there's a major we can, you know, labor and then fit, try to fit into the commandment, try to do them. You can do the commandment, and when it comes to the voice, you may not do it. You remember the young rich ruler? You know, God gave his voice in commandment. He said, you shall not, he said, all these things I have what? Kept since my youth up. Did he keep them? He kept them. And the Bible says, Jesus saw him and what? And he loved him. And then the voice of God came in person. You see, all that you have, follow me. What happened? Follow me. What happened? Follow me. What happened? Follow me. What happened? Eh? So I want us to differentiate these two. The voice oh, this one, you do all of those times. Sometimes the voice of God comes to reaffirm the commandment for you. Oh, you are not loving your bread, brother the way you ought to love. You're not working in forgiveness. You're not working with But then there is the voice that comes in person. Bring the specific mind and the specific instructions of God to us. Praise the Lord. I said the one who had diligently, painstakingly kept the commandment couldn't obey the voice. Matthew 19, 20. 20 that's the young ruler. He 
He said, Obey my voice, and I will be your God. Media, Jeremiah 7 23. He said, Obey my what? Voice, and I will be what? I'll be your God. Israel in the wilderness. You see, these two, in the story of Israel, Israel, they were disobedient. Where were they disobedient? Have we asked ourselves that question? The disobedience of Israel. You see, also Israel in the wilderness did all the commandments of God in works, but failed in his voice, touching the issues of their life. You see, obey my voice, and I will what? And I will be your God. And I've broken the voice of God in two now. The voice of God in what? Command, right? You see, you should provide. If anybody does not provide for his household, it's worse than infidel, uh, this one, and all of those ones. Then there is the voice of God that will come to this one. We come to Jima. Amen. This one will come to Brajai. This one will come to Brotope. You see that one? The one I want to explain. Praise the Lord. Look at Exodus. You see, you look at Israel. Those Israelites used to insult them in the wilderness. Some of them are, some of us have not even gotten to where they were. Exodus 30, 33, verse 29. You help me rush up some scripture so that you can see. 35, 29. Then Exodus 39, 32. Okay. Can we see? The children of Israel brought a willing offering unto the Lord, every man and woman whose hearts made them willing to bring for all manner of work which the Lord had commanded to be done by the hand of Moses. Right? Now look at 39. 42 and 43. Exodus chapter 39, verse 42, 43. You saw the one we read before that the children of Israel they brought a willing offering. Okay, verse 39, 30, 30, 42. Thus was all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation finished. And the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. So they did. Verse, okay, I'm reading verse 32. Then I will, you now jump to verse 42. Sorry, verse 32. Then you jump to verse 42. Exodus 39, 32. Thus, all the work of the commandment of the tent of the congregation finished, and the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. So they did. Then verse, 40, verse 42 of the same chapter 39. According to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel made all the work. Verse 43. And Moses did look upon all the work, and behold, they had done it as the Lord had commanded. Even so, they had done it. And Moses blessed them. If you go to the book of Numbers, Numbers 1, you see all of these children of Israel did this one. They did this, but when it comes to the boy, a lot of times, some of us, you have done all of those ones, but that is where a lot of people fail, even in their work with God. In the things that God is going to call you into. You see this one? You see the voice? It will come to you in person. Everybody's there, you know, and then when it comes, nobody knows it has come. Because the day the voice came to Abraham, nobody knew. How many people knew? Nobody. Praise the Lord. So, God will bring his voice, you see, under this dispensation of grace. That's why I started by grace is partnership. You see, the spirit was moving. That means how is the spirit going to be? We're going to move in partnership with the Holy Spirit. And that's why the New Testament never started. You see, until the Holy Ghost comes. You see, it is expedient that the spirit come. If I don't go, he will not come. Because when he comes, you see the dispensation of grace. You see the order of grace. So grace is not only defined in relation to sin, right? We are under grace. Uh, God forgives you. And every this one now. Uh, that's why I say I'll, I'll show the three motions of what? Of the spirit on, in grace. You know, under this, the spirit moving. We are looking at the context. Three. A lot of times what people are arguing, doing argument on top is one. Which is the, this is the least, which is the low one. Because there are three layers. You know, from middle floor to second floor and to the last floor. The outer chamber, that most of all the argument is happening there in relation to understanding of grace. There's the outer, there's the inner, and then there's the, the holiness of all. So, now, look at what we we're saying again, that uh, the voice of God in what? Came on. And the voice of God, what? This one is the voice of God coming to mercy. That one is very, very deep. That's why I showed you the man. People, people have jo- you could join in the generic commandment that he gives, and God will like you. You know, have you considered my servant? Damn it. He does it, and then he will now bring his specific voice. 
That is when God means business, serious business. That's why I say for God to do something definite for you, in relating, relating to your destiny, God will come and demand something from you. Is that how it started? For Adam, God demanded something from Adam before what? He did something significant in his destiny. Something that will help him to fulfill the dominion mandate. Say, be fruitful and what? Multiply. Was Adam going to give birth himself? Eh? That's how God took a rib out of God demanded something. God took a rib out of Adam and then he turned down the back as a man. And then we went the same thing to Abraham. God asked him for that child. The same thing to Jesus Christ. He said, God, the Holy Ghost moved him into the wilderness 40 days. For he was there. And then in verse, uh, that's Luke chapter 1, uh, chapter 4, verse 1, and then verse 14. He returned backward in fullness of power. That's where his public testament began. Praise the Lord. So, you see this one? Now, let me give us practical example now. You see, you can be a giver. You know, God said we should give in response to the, uh, the general... He said, this one is the general instruction to give. You know, give and it shall be given back, right? So you, shall, you can be a giver. You, are, you love God, you have the passion, you give and everything. So you can be a giver from that dimension. That is one level of giving. The second level is there. I said, you can be a giver and respond to the commandment of God that we give our offerings and none should come before God empty. One can be a giver and fail at the voice. When the voice comes to demand that you give, you like to give as you believe in giving. This is a high virtue in God. But this is a desire in you about giving. This can be different from when the voice desire that you give. There are things we do from our passion and love for God, and they are very excellent. And we must always do this and be rooted in such holy deeds. But higher than this, the things we do that are originated from the voice are the things that really proves and shows our love for God and the core depth of that law. I said I want to give an example. Again, the things we do that are originated from the voice of God are the things that reveal the core depth of our love and devotion to God, to his truth and to his way. It is easier to do things for God that we want to do than to do things for God that God wants us to do. There's a very big difference here. Last time we were teaching about the spirit of truth. What did we, how did we define truth? You see, you say truth is what? What God wants and how what? He wants it. He told Abraham, sacrifice what? Your son. And then he told him where he should what? Sacrifice it. If Abraham woke up that morning, went to the back of the kitchen and sacrificed that boy, God will come and say, where is the son I asked you to sacrifice? I have just done it. It's not just doing things that God wants you to do. He said, what God what? Wants. And what? And how what? How he wants it. Sometimes you want to even do it. Sometimes we may not be ready to do it by the how. You know, Jesus said, I am what? The way. The way is as significant as the doing in God. Praise the Lord. So that's why I say it is easier to do to do things for God that we want to do than to do things for God that he wants us to do. The first may be convenient. Or we do it at our convenience. The second may not be convenient or may not be at our convenient time. Let's see a simple example. You desire to give out a car to God as an offering by blessing someone in need of a car, so you plan it. Right? Yes. Yes. So Tosi may decide to give uh, Femi a car now, right? He may have the convenience to what? To plan it. But God may desire you give a car as an offering by blessing someone in need. This, you may not have the time to plan it. You only have the obedience to do it. I did the same thing. Eh? Should I take it again? I say you want to give a uh, topper. I want to give topper a car. Okay, I can plan it. Okay, do this and that like that. You know, out of that good heart, out of that heart of, you know, the father's heart. So I can work towards that, because I want to do. And there's certain things we do. Certain things like that, it will touch the heart of God, and God can release blessing to you. So that's one dimension of working with God. That's why we're separating these two. You know, so out of you have honored God. You know, out of 
his desire, what he wants to, us to be doing. He said, we should give, we should be our brother's keeper, we should be there. And I'm stretching not to my brother in faith and in love that is in Jesus Christ. That's one level. Then he said, in God there are truth and there are higher what? Truth. Then the second level is, I say, God may desire you give him a car, right? As an offering. That give him God. God may de- give me a car. And then how? Give by go and give it to a social person. I say, this you may not have the time to what? To plan. You only have what? You only have the obedience to what? To do it. Which one is easier? Praise the Lord. I say, which one is easier? When you have the time, planning can help you. But when you do not have the time, only obedience can push you through. Praise the Lord. He said, obey my voice and I will be your God. It's sacrosanct to working with God. It's the core foundation of our faith life. He said, the one you want to do is always easier to do than the ones God wants us to do. Even though the one we want to do may be much more difficult. But because it is what we want to do, it becomes much easier for us to do it. Please, I want us to pay attention. These are very core things in our work with God. I've seen it in my journey with God as well. I said the one we want to do is always easier to do than the ones God wants us to do. Even though the one we want to do may be much more difficult, but because it is what we want to do, it becomes much easier for us to do. Human self-will will lighten our bodies. In our own eyes, but in the eyes of God, it deepens our bonding. Now, it is much easier to understand the, you see, that key, I call it killing work. To build a tower that reaches out to heaven. Is it a small work? You think if God told them to do the same, you think they will do it? You think they will do it? Say, let us build a tower that will reach up to, they don't have the technology that will happen. Even today, it's not going to be easy. As at that ancient time, when they made those bricks, he said, let us build a tower that will stretch up to heaven. You know why? Because it was what they wanted to do. As I say, it is easier to understand the killing work to build a tower that reaches heaven because it is what we want to do than to obey God who tells us just to live in simple what? Settlement spread across the earth. God said, replenish the earth and what? Fill it. What God told them to do was much more simpler. He said, spread, fill the earth, right? Stay everywhere. They say, no, that one was much, well, become very difficult for them to do. The one they want to do now is to come together and to build a tower. It's a human self will. And sometimes we bring it into our faith work, and sometimes we don't even know it. But God will differentiate the two when you come to Him. So that's why we must have the wisdom and the gift of discernment to separate these two, even our personal journey with God. Praise the Lord. I said, the things we want to do from self will sometimes, if God tells us to do the same thing at other times, so many will not be able to do them. The same thing we did on our own volition. It's just like now, I said, ah, maybe you just, ah, this person really touched my life those days. I want one time you plan it, maybe those of us that are working, you can even collect a whole monster life and give it to that person. Right? And maybe on uh, a day before they pay you salary, and then God come, that's to some amount of money. I want you to take it somewhere there. Amen. We start sweating. Right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. You can see how these things works. Let me give you another example. Somebody that has four children. You may plan, okay, for each of my child, I'm going to give them a house. The same person, as the children grow, he gives them houses. He labors, he struggles, gives them houses. If the same person has five children, he'll give a fifth house. Right? But that same person now, God tells the same person that I want you to give a house to so so it becomes sacrifice. The person starts sweating. The same person, if you have seven children, you give them seven houses. Am I correct? Eh? These things are very, very slicky. One must pay attention to them. Praise the Lord. As the same person, if you have seven children, you what? Someone that is sponsoring uh, maybe four children. And then per eventually the person has two children. Maybe there is a child in need. Okay, let me just adopt this parent. Let me sp- it become very difficult. Every one of us sees that our parents, that our fathers, or something that now the number you see. Okay, I have four children. I have three children. You are sponsoring them. The same level of sacrifice you are doing for your children, even fifty percent to doing another child becomes very difficult. If one is added to your child, you duplicate the same thing hundred percent. What you do hundred percent on your own, but when God is pushing you to do it fifty percent. 
the strength to do it, most time is lacking. You see where grace will need to come in to help us to lift us up and do certain things we must do in God. Grace will demand that you do a lot of things. Under this dispensation and order of God, it's not just one side of God, 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 like that. No, it's, it's in grace, it's our partnership with specifically the Holy Spirit. Jesus has done his own and has gone. What we do now, we worship Jesus. We have come to the knowledge of like Jesus is our Lord, our Savior. Jesus is the third person of the Trinity. We worship him. But the active partnership is with the Holy Spirit. You see grace? I say grace is the Spirit moving. And you're moving in with, with the Spirit and in the Spirit. And where does that movement lead to? That's why I say the three motions of grace. Or the three motions of the Spirit. Or the three motions of that I say the spirit movement. These three motions of that movement. After this illustration, I'll give I'll come to talk about that one. Now, I say self-will make the things God wants us to do difficult. Anytime you see that certain things to do in God is difficult, you know why it's difficult? It's not that thing that is difficult, it's self-will that makes it what difficult. Because the things that God always asks, what is difficult, they carry your boy and go and kill him. Is it a difficult activity? The activity says, is it difficult? Eh? Carry, okay, now, maybe carry, maybe you just drove here now and say, maybe carry your car, give it out. Is it a difficult thing to give the car out? Why does it now become a heavy? Why does it become weight? You know why? It's just one word. Please, me, let me type it self way. One of the beauties in grace is that it will help you to crush this. To rise above self will and self God. Me, let me type it boldly. Self will. You see, the. That's why you say that uh, self will make the things God wants us to do what? Difficult. Self will make the things we want to do lighter. Because it's what you want to do, it makes it what? Lighter. Now, for instance, are those that love football very well, if they say maybe Cristiano Ronaldo or Messi is coming to the stadium, you know they'll be there from morning to night. Am I correct? Eh? But if you maybe at a certain maybe just instruction that uh, go and stay there for six, seven hours. You see them sweating, drinking water. Is this... I say this to highlight something very dangerous and very potent in human life. That the cancer, that the destruction of the human generation. Self will. Self will make the things God wants us to do what? Difficult. Maybe say go to a stadium and do evangelism there, talk to people for the next six hours. Say, eh? In fact, you can use, use one year to be telling you the level of sacrifice I did. Hey, this is all. Amen. But you can sit there in that stadium waiting for Cristiano Ronaldo for 12 hours. You never see it as a sacrifice. Self will make the things we want to do what? Lighter. The more difficult we see the things God wants us to do is, the more we can then see how rooted we are in self will. So if you don't judge ourselves, then we are reprobate. Evaluate yourself. The things God wants us to do, the more difficult you see how this thing is difficult, it tells you the degree to which you are rooted in self will. See? Try to simplify all of these things so that we can now know how we can partner, our partnership with the Holy Ghost can be very, very effective and fruitful. But that's why, that's what he's here for. Think that the Holy Ghost is going, okay, this meeting, everybody's falling down and uh, moving around. The Holy Ghost is saying, this part of what he comes to do. But the weight of the matter is what we want to bring out. That one is not you. It's the Holy Ghost moving in power. Someone that is not even the Holy Ghost is even an angel. The angel of the Lord can come here and activate things and you see the glory of God here is angel. But this one that defines the core of the man, this one that affects your eternal destiny, your eternal destiny will be decided not by the things that God does for you under this atmosphere of God come, he's moving and letting him no. It will be decide, determined by the things you have done for God. It will be determined by your response to God, not God's response to you. God's response to you is a foundation so that you can respond to God. Amen. God drew near to Abraham, and then Abraham delivered a very dangerous response to God. And then that became the definition of Abraham, both in time and eternity. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, look at. Uh, John chapter 12, verse 50. And then 1 John chapter 5, verse 2 and 3. John chapter 12, verse 50. And then we're going to call off 1 John chapter 5, verse 2 and 3. John chapter 12, verse 50. 
and I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. So the one thing I want us to note there, he say, his commandment is what? Life what? Eternal. His command, the thing that God tells you, he said, is, is everlasting life. He said, there is life. He said, ever present life, endless life in the thing that God tells you to do. Either the voice of God in command or the voice of God in person, whatsoever God tells you to do, God demanded the read from Adam. And the God sovereignly took that rib and said, God returned back a woman to him. You know. So God took one child from Abraham, but God carried the whole nation and brought it to Abraham. He said, His commandment. That's what, whatever God tells, don't be afraid of his voice. Some of us go to the place of prayer, you are even afraid of hearing God. If you are thinking of something, God should not go and demand this one. No. He should not go, he should not go there. So if you are praying, if if you don't see that the voice of God is coming from this direction, you can turn to this direction. And where the voice of God does not come in any direction, it's just your mind that is deceiving you. you know, like, so you like that. Sometimes we are scared of what he will tell us. You want to go and marry now, you are scared of it. Yeah, let's go, knock some that. Let me go and look for a wife for myself. Or just go and pick your husband for myself. You are not sure who is going to tell you to marry. Let me know that you go and marry this sister. Or you see that brother, you know. You understand? This brother, no, you know, you already, you see that? Fear. Abi? He said, but he said, he said, his commandment is what? He God tells you that this is the woman that you marry. In that woman, you find life forever. In that man, you will find what? Life for what? forever. Is it this self for you? See, this is what I want. This is one of the, this is one of the biggest struggles that God has with his people. This one. Some of us, this when we're growing up, maybe with our parents, our parents were were pastors or were children, were pastors, and we have certain things are formed inside since that time. Even as we are serving God, those things are what? The, a young lady said, Me, I don't want to marry a pastor. Once you put a pastor beside your name, you run away. Upright? He said, I know how my parents suffer. They were serving in one place. So oh, he said, Maybe you are a missionary or amen. You see, certain things have what? Formed. Or well, maybe a lady that has been abused in the course of maybe growing up by men or something. He doesn't want to hear anything about men. Even when he has even gotten born again, you will not be telling hey, this one like that. You know, he doesn't want to hear anything about men. Or you begin to see all men in the light of maybe those that the father abused them when they were growing up or something. But he, he just does not like that. Praise the Lord. See this. He said, and I know his what commandment is what. So he said, tell him, God, speak to me. Whatever you tell me is life eternal. In it is fullness of life. That's why First John chapter 5, verse 2 and 3. First John chapter 5, 2 and 3. It's okay. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandment. For this is the love of God that we do what? This is the love of God that we keep his commandment. And his commandment are not what? When the command of God becomes grievous, why is it grievous? We said it before. Why is it difficult? Why is it grievous? He said his commandments are not grievous. This is John. And Jesus said they are even life what? Eternal. And then yet this is where all our struggles were. Ah. Listen. Let me give you an illustration now. You think, no, this thing, let's not rush. Hey, in, no, I'm not talking about this meeting. In life generally. Hey, blue, 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 blue. After when you are building your house. Maybe your first house, you finish, you are building, building, building. Tomorrow you are going to pack in, you have invited people for all of the merry, 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 and everything. And that night, see, and the word of the Lord came to Elijah. <laughs> <laughs> and that night, eh? See, and God comes, no, he's meeting you as a friend. No, I say it's partnership. Do you? you see, this my servant has labored for so long. I want to encourage him, he's discouraged. I'm so surprising, you know, that this is your house that you give me. You give me. Eh? No, yes. You know, you know, this is the dispensation of grace that we are talking about. What grace does. See, grace. He said, who are thou, thou, that mountain, that mountain of obedience, it will, it will become plain. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. Because in Zerubbabel is the spirit coming. 
Is it good? When you have trusted God in love, you have seen him as a partner, as a senior partner of this life and this work. Praise the Lord. God carried a young man and put him on a throne. God seated a young man on the throne. What was Nandi? Who gave him the truth? Saul. Who gave Saul the truth? He now wants his own child to sit on that dancer. Is he self way? What is the what difference does he make? How does it affect you as a person? Your rule, your rule, reign, your but is he what he wanted? It becomes so difficult for him to accept that another person will sit on the throne. What is difficult in about somebody sitting on the throne, right? If this is the throne of the kingdom, you are the one sitting. When you stand up, right? Another person will go and what? Is it a difficult something? But it became too difficult for Saul. He cannot comprehend it. And he spent, when he knew that David was going to sit and not this other person, he spent his entire energy, mastered the whole national army, looking for that boy to kill him. Again and again, look at everything he was doing. What was that? self Very simple, simple things will be complicated by self will The day you give up self will that day you find life in God. You find life. It's all of the pains sometimes that you're having. These are the things that make all of most of these things that God wants us to do very difficult. What is the definition of grace again in the context of what we're doing here today? We say grace is what? Grace is the spirit moving. Grace are the motions of the spirit in your life. And you learning to dance in tune, in sync with those motions. To move as it's moving with you, and it's moving in you, and then it's moving for you. You see, grace? Praise the Lord. Okay, now let me see this. The things God tells you to do carry more weight in God than the things you desire to do in righteousness for God. They are weight in glory. I take it again. The things God tells you to do carry more weight in God. Than the things you desire to do in righteousness for God. So, to separate things again. In light, in light of what we have been talking about, they say the voice of God, we broke it into two. The voice of God in what? In commandment. And the voice of God what? In person. Oh, goodness. When God gave us the Holy Spirit, you know what He did? In Jesus, all of the teaching that Jesus taught us everywhere, all the teaching that Jesus did, God gave us his word in the New Commandment, the New Testament in Commandment. All those teachings, the Beatitude, that one is all gen- it's generic, it's general. But in the Holy Ghost, God now brought his voice to you in person. You see the two things we are talking about? The voice of God in Commandment and the voice of God in what? In person. So in the Holy Ghost, God brings his voice to you in person. That means the Spirit of God is going to talk to you. Direct. Wired to you. Specific. Such voice that you cannot carry and translate. And that person cannot come and do it. There are certain things that God has have done, led me to have done in my life. You won't be able to do them. And there are certain things God has led you to do in your life. It is not for me to do them. This is different from the... You see, this is why the Holy Ghost was part of one of the core reasons why the Holy Ghost was given. To help us to obey the voice of God in commandment. The New Testament commandment now that Jesus has given us. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus and all of those things that Jesus has taught us. To help us to do them and the things that the spirit of God will be instructing us. He told Paul that I should not go to that city. He wanted to preach, right? He said go to that city. Go to a what? Another what? City. Some of us will not hear. We must go there. They are already waiting for me. That's my reputation as a man. I don't keep my word again. God told one. God, God told another man of God that this man of God will die early because his personal principle is violating him. That man' personal principle was stronger than the voice of the Holy, that, than what than the speaking of God, of God to him. The voice of God. He told another man of God. The man of God actually died early. But how can something happen to a man of God? Do you know the many things that are happening there? I, how can I, don't look at any, anything that happened to anybody should not discourage you. Do you know the things God has told me that I'm struggling with that this voice in what? In person. That I may be struggling with, right? When we were here last time, I told us about the instruction about when God told me to quit my job, right? And all of the struggle there. Were you there when he told me? Nobody knew. Nobody knew. You see, see this, so this is where, this is the one that determines a lot of things about our life, the things that happens around us. And even our destiny. Now, let me go back to the statement I made that 
the things God tells you to do carry more weight in God than the things you desire to do for God in righteousness. Both of them carry weight of glory. What we are saying that one is more. Both are highly righteous. But we are looking at weight here. In God, everything carries weight. Weight. And all things are weighed. All our sacrifices, our love, are weighed carefully. Weigh in God for eternal reward. Now, let's talk about two men in Scripture. Two people gave their children as offering to God in Scripture. Father Abraham and Jabez. One was the voice originated. The other was human desire and passion for God originated, which is higher. You hear what I say? The two people gave their child as sacrifice to God. As offering. I say, Father what? And who? Jabez. Jabez. Say two people gave their children as offering in scripture, Abraham and Jabez. I say one was the voice originated. The other was human desire and passion what? Originated. The one that became the true witness of the love of God in man and the true witness of human faith is the one sacrifice originated in the voice. I take it again. The things God tells us to do carry more weight in, glo- in God than the things we desire to do for God what? In righteousness. Praise the Lord. So can you see the difference? So sometimes a lot of things, okay, you have, have done this, have done this, have done that. They carry glory. They carry weight. But they are not as weighty as the one thing the most I tells you to do unto them. So I see Abraham, Jabez and Abraham gave their son. Jephthah, sorry, not Jabez. Jephthah, Jephthah, sorry. Jephthah and Abraham, what? Gave their son. Sacrificed their son. I say, Jephthah was even the daughter, right? Jephthah was the daughter, sorry. Jephthah, you know, sometimes too much talk, your brain will just say. Eh? That's about say, I tell her, not talk too much. <laughs> Amen. Jephthah and Abraham, two people sacrificed their child. Abraham and what? Jephthah. One was the voice of God what? Originated. One was human desire for God what? Originated. Today it is Father Abraham, not Father Jephthah. His father who? Not Father what? Jephthah. The one that became the true witness of the love of God in man and the true witness of human faith is the one sacrifice originated in the world. Praise the Lord. The grace of God comes into your life to raise you up into what? Into partnership with God. To raise you up into the desires of God, into the mind of God, into the will of God, essentially. You see, the order and the dispensation of grace. I say we must counter mention to what Jephthah did. Jephthah sacrifice also stand as a monument of love and faith before the Lord and before us. But in God, they are truth. And there are higher truth. There is faith and there is a higher faith. There is love and a higher law. There is sacrifice and a higher sacrifice. Abraham sacrificed his son. Jesus sacrificed his person. The two sacrifices are incomparable. Praise the Lord. In the light of Jesus' sacrifice, Abraham's sacrifice, sacrifice becomes a minor. I say, in the Holy Spirit, God calls us to the voice. God calls us. God gave us commandment in Jesus Christ, then gave us the voice in the person of the Holy Spirit. Say, obey my voice, and I will be your God. Jeremiah 7, 23. I say, how do the two blend together? The commandment prepares you for the voice, which is a higher demand than the commandment. The voice is a higher demand because through it, the Lord contend with our personal will. It now becomes will versus will. The will of God versus the will of man. We should bow. Jesus, in not Jesus, it was difficult. This is not. It was difficult for the Son of God Himself. How did He say? Say what? You know, it was will versus what? You see what the voice of God tests. When the for God gives you instruction, do the, this. You know what? It is your will whether you will surrender your will because that is what you have. All that you have is your volition, your human free will, self will. And pollution in heaven, when they look at you, they don't look at the three bedroom flat, 
you are living inside as what you have. They don't see the car you are driving as what you have. What they see that you have is your human volition. You see your free will. And so when the voice of God comes to test that, Jesus said, not my will, but your words, your speed on. And then he proceeded on. Praise the Lord. Are we together so far? Eh? Now, those who do not obey the clear, open commandment of God cannot obey the voice of God when it comes. Now, I told the voice of God in what? In commandment. And the voice of God what? You can't obey the God, voice of God in person. If you have not obeyed the voice of God in general, what? Commandment. All those who say, love your neighbor, uh, you know, be humble. You see all those, if you don't obey it, you can't say when the voice of God, you cannot obey it. You see how the two of them link together. Right? He said, those who do not hear Moses and the prophets speaking on earth will still not hear even someone wants to rise from the grave and speak to them or someone come from heaven and speak to them. Jesus came. He said, you cannot hear me because you do not hear Moses. And those who do not hear Jesus, they cannot hear the Holy Spirit. There's th- things that look at Matthew chapter 5, 6, 7, a lot of instructions there. You cannot do that one. When the Holy Ghost gives you a word, you, you, you're going to do it. You can't do the capacity to do that will not be there. What gives you the capacity to hear, obey God in the voice is the capacity you are built from the commandments. Or the generic one, you are striving and everything like that, and then God comes and helps you. You see why Jesus said that those who did not hear John the Baptist in their days, they will know what? They couldn't hear Jesus after Jesus came. Those that rejected John the Baptist automatically rejected Jesus Christ. You see someone that says, just no matter, love your neighbor. You are not even striving to love your neighbor. Is it the same person's child that the Holy Ghost will talk to you to do something for? Is it that person's child that you want to do something for? The uncle that you have things in mind from what the uncle did to your mother or did to your father, you have something in mind for that uncle. Is it the one the Holy Ghost will give instruction towards that person? Praise the Lord. So what do you do here? One or two person. Can we just pass the mic? You want to ask a question? You want to? Okay. Can we appreciate that coolly? Can we give you the mic? I hope I've not offended you. Eh? Sometimes, maybe I I told a friend yesterday that why you listen to Pastor? You ask yourself, do I read the Bible? (laughs) Hello, hello. Anyway, um, two ways. If you can't, if you're not faithful in little things, who can give greater things to you? Yes, sir. That's one. And secondly, um, John writing his letters to the church, one of the letters said, if you can't love the person you can see, how can you claim you love the God you can see? If the general uh, commandment that by simple commandment um, rules from scriptures, if you can't really understand or obey them because they are clear enough, then you can't get the higher truth, which is the voice in person. So I, I think for now, that's how I, I can best summarize all I've had so far. The voice, the commandment. The commandment being obeyed is what will generate the voice. And if you've not obeyed one, you will not. I listen to someone who sometimes said the very fact that he saw so this bad right, inevitably he was not going to be blessed because they were they were tied together. Since he lost his bad right, he was never going to be blessed. Even if Rebecca, their cunning mother, had not orchestrated it, somehow he would still have missed the blessing. Can we appreciate uh, the Kule? All right, Sister Chidima, and then uh, Brother Justice is raising his hand too. Okay. Where's our camera people? No. Thank you, sir. I've honestly grabbed a lot. I really want to appreciate. You're welcome. Okay, Okay, this is the Holy Spirit that empowers our choice to actually give. So, how do we not know when when God is actually directing us to give? And when our choice is being empowered to give, like we are willing to give, to get when it's coming from us and when it's coming from God, because I know that it's God that empowers us to give. Because I had this encounter, um, that was last year. Um, I was being led to give a particular sister that used to be offered to me, and um, the sister was no longer in Lagos, but I'm like. I thought it wise to a kind of um, gives part of my salary to her. 
And then I was like still dragging fist. I had that money in my account. Nothing was holding me back, right? But the next day after, okay, the next day, on that particular day rather, when I was going to work, I wanted to like walk into the office. That particular person called me. I said she needed financial help. So I was like telling myself, oh God, I disobeyed you. I did like three prompts. Immediately I was led. So how would we, was it God that wanted me to give? Or it was my personal choice to give? Okay, that's good. Thank you, my sister. Can we appreciate her? That one is clear that, uh, you see, there's what we call the Holy Ghost can. The voice of the, of the Holy Spirit is not uh, just uh, like the way, okay, like my voice I'm talking to you. Like, it comes in different form. You know, but you will have the witness that God wants you to do this thing. Sometimes God can stir your heart. Right? So, but that one, it was clear that the Holy Ghost wanted you to give her money. And then, because he has seen your struggle, that's why he now went to raise that what? That raised that confirmation. So that to give you assurance. And then, so that's why the Bible says, by two immutable things, in which it was impossible for God to lie. God willing to show the hair of salvation, the immutability of his counsel. God wanted to reassure us. That's why I say, by myself have I swore. Why would God swear to Abraham? He wanted to give him assurance. So sometimes... God speaks to us, of course, because, you know, we are still learning the faith life. Then he sometimes go beyond us to go and give us what? Assurance. It's just like the issue, I think I spoke about this the last time I was here, or maybe two seasons I was here, that Mary, God told Mary, God spoke to Mary, and God expected that Joseph to believe what Mary would tell her. Because God spoke to Joseph, uh, Mary and not Joseph. So Mary, when she became pregnant by the Holy Ghost, even before she became pregnant, or the day she became pregnant, she told Joseph, Joseph, I am pregnant too. It was an angel that appeared to me. And uh, he said, I'm going to have a child. And that child is going to be the son of God. What concerns Joseph and the son of God? Amen. Joseph was looking for a wife. Eh? And, you know, and if he did not believe. And the Bible says he was a righteous man. And he didn't want to make her a disgrace. So he wanted to separate from her what? Peacefully. And then because God has seen what the conversation that was going on in the heart of Joseph, God now interjected that conversation with the vision. Then the angel appeared and said, Fear not to take Mary, for she is what? Your wife. Sometime now, let me say something. You see? Now, it was because of that doubt that that encounter came. If she had believed her and everything like that, the angel may not have come. You see, that's why sometimes things we do in faith is higher than certain visible manifestations that we get. Jesus said, blessed are they that have not seen, but what? Believe. Sometimes you have vision. It may be coming because of your doubt. Sometimes I'll start bragging, hey, angel, angel visited me. But the person that did not see angel, God spoke to me, just believe it and move in faith. That one is higher. But the one because that angel came, because angel did not come to him, not because you have believed. He said, faith is high. Because you have simply believed. So that other encounter that came was because of that. that. I'll give you another example in scripture. This man, uh, Peter. Peter should not argue with Jesus. Jesus said, before the cock crew, all of you what? Deny. Jesus like God will speak to you. You know he has learned how to argue a long time. When that's why in, in uh, Acts 10, I'll be Acts 9, stand up and kill. He said, not so Lord. I have not eaten anything unclean. This is what Jesus was talking to them, that Peter he didn't see say Peter. He said, All of you what? You deny me what? How many times? Before they call, no, no, no. He said, Before they call, could all of you what? Deny me. Peter said, No. If all men will deny me, not me. Jesus said, No, you will deny me. Peter won that argument that day. Of, no, you, of course, you can always win an argument with God. Amen. But you, you, we will meet at the other side. Peter, you know what he said? Jesus now uttered that word. Before, you know, you see, the word, Jesus, the word of God is creative. It can create things and then it can create circumstances. It can create events. Jesus now said, before the call crew, you will have denied me what? Three times. That was why Peter had that experience. You know, I've had it. You see where it came from? He said, before the call crew, how many times? If he had said, before the call crew, ten times, I will deny him ten times. Ten cocks will be crowned because everything is in line with the speakings of God. Even the physical head that you are seeing, God said, let there be a what? They saw you saw because God spoke it. God spoke that experience into the life of Peter. Why? To bring, so that Peter can, to bring out the doubt that is what? 
all of them doubt and unbelievers there not only in peter it's not only peter that will have denied all of them will have denied him but it was because it's peter that was arguing he didn't ask jesus say all of you you all will deny me right you all of you run away and leave me everything seems like but peter says it's not in me so the whole of that experience was that jesus sometimes wanted peter to see what is inside him he just brought it out say you will deny me he just, three times he just brought it out for peter to see and when peter saw it he now knew that jesus was correct so he arrived that jesus won the, the argument he was not the one because he was the one that spoke like jesus did not say anything again he said you will deny me say never never even if i will die for you jesus kept quiet but the next thing he did john looked at peter after he had denied him three times you see john looked at him peter looked at him he left that place started crying he said you know can you see so back to my sister's question you see sometimes god wants us to do something he now raises a witness to help us that thing that that cock crawling was god helping peter to see what is inside amen so he can bring an angel come and visit he can give you show you revelation that's all must not be pride Wait, the things you see god should not be pride you don't even know why god is showing you maybe because of unbelief that is there and another person that have a measure of small faith, God doesn't show him. So you are despite someone that does not have a vision, right? Before I came for this meeting, now you know the three angels were there. They were telling me did this and that. And that minister come and say, did not mention anything about angel. You look at them, say this minister that mentioned this encounter. That's the minister. That is not like that. Amen. Can you appreciate your father? So the things he tells you. You will always have that witness in your spirit that this is the Holy Ghost speaking. There's a way you will know. And then, two, the final thing I want to say that which is very important for all of us. If you obey one, it made the second one easier for you to understand. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. So if you do it like that's why you must this thing we must train ourselves. As you do one, do two, you are now becoming familiar with the voice, the intensity and your frequency of hearing and descend that voice increases higher. But if he tells us we trample it, if he tells us, and it's very light. Look at the way God was putting it in your heart. You know, it's something you can even kill it and not even mention it to your husband. Abi, you just go on business. Like Nobody will know. You will come back to the same house. How I love calling your name. Whose name are you calling? I told you to do something. You have not done it. Every day, not every day, oh, yesterday I see told you something. Your name is the same. You know? So that's why I say this one is very, very dangerous. It's not this congregational thing we are doing. Hey, Tyrannos or something, all of us are there. Or you go to your local assembly and everything. And that. You see, God will, God will sees us corporately, right? He, there's a time he comes. You only God can visit us corporately. But the same time that God is visiting us corporately, He separates us into individual. He will be meeting you as individual. In the fact that all of you are there corporately. That's how, it, that's how it does. That's how it does. Individually. And that individual one-on-one meeting, you know, right? One-on-one meeting, that is the one that will produce destiny, right? All of us are here and I see so many uh, ladies here. You guys are my friend and everything. But now, like she, one day is my wife. Now, I will meet that individually for me to have my son, King David. One-on-one. So we cooperate, God loves our corporate this thing. We do oh like that, like that, coming together. But two good friends like Kim Eli and Collins now, God will meet you separately. And then he bring his voice to you. Amen. So the more we obey one, the more it will strengthen us to what? To obey the other one. Before God, that's why look at Abraham. God demanded his son twice. But the first son that God demanded was the lesser son. Ishmael. As at that time, God said he should send Ishmael away as a young boy. It was because Abraham was able to obey that one that he was able to obey what? Isaac. So Abraham sacrificed his son twice. You know what it means to send that boy in those days? They would just kill the boy and carry that woman and go, one warrior. Just, you know, the world was loose. They were just, you know, they were just fighting up and down. Military raid here. Look at what happened in the days of David. They raided the camp and took all their wives. All those little children, they don't want to just throw it inside the bush. Abraham sent his son. Abraham was a very wealthy man. And he carried a, a, just a water and bread and gave it to the wife. They had a child for him. And Abraham watched them go. God said, Let them go. To you, to you is, if you are talking, it's Ishmael. It's not Ishmael. To Abraham, Ishmael is a son. It's a son. He even told God, Let Ishmael live. God said, No. 
So Ishmael, 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 no. You see? You know, so we must get into the reality of the Bible. You should like choose one now, your daughter, they say you should let her go. Because he's not the child of the covenant. Hey, she's, she's, um, what's the name of your daughter again? First daughter. Son, Abby. David. Oh, that let David. My covenant is not with David. It's in another one. He, he brings it home. She, the, you know, he brings it home. Like, let David is not with David. And like that, and I say, as David said, just go and drop him in one junction. Take him to just drop him there. Somebody, you just go and drop David like that. Can you sleep? Dickie Brown was sleeping. You know? That was how God ripped his heart and prepared him for the sacrifice of Isaac. So one obedience prepare you for what? Our work with God is sequence and sequence of obedience. You will climb the staircase of obediences to arrive at the ultimate place of your destiny. God told him to deep it. Yeah, separate from a uh, lot. Abby? Separate, separate. Uh, like that. All those separation. All right. Then, uh, just to Sabi. Okay, thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. Sorry, I must not forget the three emotions of what. That's where we're going to end it. After I take all these questions, so in the multitude of talk, we'll not forget it. The three emotions. I say grace is the spirit, what? Moving. And I want to look at that movement. Three motions of movement. Okay. I have a contribution and then a question. All right, sir. The contribution is I, I, I came to understand that our compliance to God's demand. Our compliance to God's demands for us demonstrates our commitment and capability to carry the destiny He is giving to us. Um, in Abraham's compliance, uh, God found him worthy to be the patriarch of God's generation on earth. And um, the, the question is is it right to? Ask for confirmation. You can somehow attend, attend, attend to it, but just in case you can put uh, some clarification. Is it right to ask for confirmation of God's voice? So sometimes um, it's so strong and so challenging, you want to be sure. Is this really God or am I being excited? Is it exciting? Sometimes also, if you always hear God, that particular voice in God's presence, maybe during intense worship, um, someone could be tempted to say, you know, it could just be excitement. It could just have been excited. Especially when you leave the atmosphere and you're beginning to recontemplate that voice. You know? Praise the Lord. Why can I mean not I mean, don't have to answer the question? Can who want to answer it? You know, yeah, it's, it's it's a community we have here. Can anybody anybody that will it? Okay, Robola. Praise the Lord. My name is Adebola. Um, to add as in um, to what you have said, I think it's right. When you look at the life of um, Samson, when the angel visited the mother of Samson. The one that has been the age of his death. So, when the one has communicated what the age of death, then the God went to the end. He confirmed it. But just like what Pastor said, it is very, very good and it is the greater when we obey without confirmation. But in most cases, based on our self will, we give you the name of this. But based on this teaching, now, come to understand that. More, um, it is more profitable for us to obey when we hear that voice. Yes, it is more profitable. But in most cases, it's good to seek for um, the confirmation and confirmation of death. Thank you so much. Who else again? <laughs> Robola, okay. Uh, Brother Daniel. Uh, yeah, Brother Daniel is in front. Uh, okay. Thank you, Brother Bola. Okay. Um, thank you so much, sir. Thank you, bro, for that. Um, Question. Okay, Pastor rightly mentioned that um, whichever way we approach the issue of obedience and doing what God wants us to do, it has significance in the spirit. Now, if you do it out of your own volition, from what you said, when you are excited, okay? And from my own personal experience, when you are excited, it's easier for God to speak to you because He knows your heart. As it's where it's aligned, you can receive from him. 
that what happens over time. You know, Apostle Romain has shared the, um, on several occasions how that during worship, intense worship, he receives those very difficult instructions. They are difficult at that point. And Pastor said that when it's coming from you, it's usually not difficult. So when it is difficult and you feel his excitement, that is where self will are setting. He tries to quickly interrupt, you know, and stop you from obeying God. And we've learned that it is better to obey without seeking, you know, for signs. On different occasions, Jesus refused to give signs as it were. He just wanted men to obey. Okay, so when you feel his excitement, I'm going by what Pastor said. You might just still obey, knowing that it still has a significance. It's called the righteous act. Okay, so that's that's my own position. Just obey, provided you feel it's coming from God. Just obey. Hallelujah. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Can we appreciate him? Thank you. Mm. Pastor Tucker, please tell us your name, your full names, and give us your contribution. Uh, my name is. Uh, I feel that <coughs> it has to do with uh, it depends on how it comes and uh, looking at a different situation like the example Bola gave uh, I think most of the time when we have that kind of feeling I want to give an example it's like when you have a budget for a month and you have four children you are not you have four children, you need to face to face, there's no food at home. And then you are not drunk. And God said you should move it like that to the person. And that person, fortunately enough, the person have much. I mean, is it he could he, sometimes he even gives you a doubt sometimes. Just to but God is now telling you to take it to him. From my own experience. I feel that sometimes when such instruction comes like that, God has a plan. There are things He wants to break up in your life. And then the best way you should do is that you will have that situation. It becomes normal to doubt it and to say you want to compound. It's not because God is good. didn't hear you. you. You had. It was clear. But the problem is now that you look at what you have in ground. Then, looking at what you have on ground has blocked your vision to see what you could do at the next minute. So that brings you to that position. But there is no other way to do it is to obey. Else, you will defeat the class. And it will be in the other way. Nobody learns anything by hard work, like by easy way. Everybody learns it in a hard way. If you want to study your physics, you want to, you learn, it's very hard to study. Sit down and study. But if you fail that exam, it becomes harder to now attend class and say you now want to pass that same course. You might not even have A again. You might in the first place, you might have A when you even do give it what you take. The second one, you are then harder, you are not even sure of getting the same result. So the best way is just to depend on that's where your work with God now comes into that point. Your work with God from beginning to that point, that's where it comes in. So when most times for you to skate through that particular thing, I'm talking practically now, you must not be obeying the day he says you give pain. But the issue is that he said if you have 20 naira, he says you give five naira, it becomes difficult for you to give five naira. You will not pass the day of 50 naira. So what what will bring most of us to that point is that the level of I don't know, maybe this is the level of disobedience in the past into little things will not be able you have you lack the power to now do this one you don't have anything to confirm your heart if if you have not been hearing from God you say you have hearing problem hearing problem the first Peter said how do we know that we belong to God say we hear from God because we listen to God how do we know the difference between the spirit of truth and the spirit of error? Is that one of them, one hears from God and they do what God 
people that we are speaking to, they will do what God is saying. But the other one is the spirit of deception. It's simply it's either you're hearing after them. If you're hearing after problem, okay, you, you know how to diagnose your problem and begin to restructure your ability to hear. But now you don't, you're hearing the other problem you had well, is obedient. Straight up. But what will help you to be realistic, what will help you to escape through that thing, as being your work with God in obeying, obeying little, little, little instruction. I'm saying it, that is true. You have, you have salary, you have problems, right? All God wants to solve it in a very clear way. But that becomes one of the most difficult way to solve a problem. Because to you, it's very difficult. But God looks at it and says, Dog, open here. He will not show you until you open this one. Because you don't know who will send the next one to you. You just want to obey and let that be God. So I pray God give us understanding. Amen. I appreciate you. Amen. Okay. Bro, Joba. Okay. Praise the Lord. Uh, I think this hit soon. And I want to thank uh, Mr. Tokwa. I think you have feel very well in the past. So <laughs> you gave a very practical answer to that. And I can actually uh, fellowship with that thought. I think the answer to your question, as much as her question, as much as my questions, uh, you attended to it in your teaching, sir. And I think it's simply grace. Because I have failed a lot. I mean, I probably didn't realize how much I have failed until Papa started teaching, and I thank you for asserting that I've been here today. You know, you may have obeyed instructions in the past. It is good. It sets you, it gives you a track record, okay? It helps you to recognize that my sheep, they hear my voice. They know because they've been obeying in the past. And that creates a precedence for you to be able to fellowship with the voice when it comes next. It doesn't mean the next instruction will be any easier. So I think... The simple answer will be grace because if you have to bank on earlier obedience, what Papa was saying, as I understand that, he, 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 he sets you in motion for the next challenge. For example, if you didn't have, and I'm speaking practically now because I'm very glad this is practical. If you lost one million, you lost two million. And you felt like the whole world was going to crumble on you. And somehow you got out of that challenge. And then, whatsoever next thing you were doing, you scaled it. We are no longer talking 1 million. I am now talking about engaging transactions of 5 million, 10 million. And then that business fails. It doesn't mean it becomes easier on you. But there is something that has happened because you scaled it days of 1 million and 2 million. You begin to have hope. God did this one before, I am very sure I will scale this. And like Pastor used to say, hope is the life of the soul. Okay, so what prior obedience or past obedience does to you, as I understand, is that it gives you a lot of breathing ground in order to execute or allow grace to be in motion. Okay, you suffocate grace when you don't, you don't give it room to expand. What past obedience does is that it expands, it gives more allowance to grace to function in your life. Because you may have excelled all through and at the last phase of your life, the most important instruction, you flopped. And that's it. Use case, Moses. So I think the word is really grace. Okay, And the name Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel. Zeru means son, born. Okay, Babel is Babylon. So it means Zerubbabel had he had things, he had infirmities. Okay, the man Zerubbabel, he was born into infirmity. He was born in Babylon, and there was a need for that grace. I don't know how Zerubbabel got to a point where God had to say, "You know what? It is 
not by power, not by mind. Probably he has been obeying. And it has been the days of his might. He said, in the days of your power, your people shall be willing. There are times that there are atmospheres, there are communal grace, there is an apostolic gift. And then the spirit of faith moves you. And you have done those things. And you mistakenly thought it was because you were obedient that you did those things. It was because there was a sovereign apostolic grace that you, whether mistakenly or not, once you enter the company of a prophet, there's every tendency for you to prophesy. Probably you were under the grace of the man of God and you had been a giver and that grace came upon you and you were moved to give and then you gave. Good, it was the grace, umbrella grace, but at that time, what you have also done is that you have expanded your, the capacity of your soul to allow for the movement of the Holy Spirit does not necessarily mean that you have the capacity to obey the next instruction. So I think it comes down to, at every point we will need grace. That is why he that thinketh he stands, let him take heed. Because it may be that moment you think you have capacity, you build capacity, we've been obeying this in time past. It will be easy to obey. He said, I will shake myself up again. And it was at that time that he fell. And that fall was bad. So I think we should, it boils down to soberness. So when you get excited, you may, it, it may not mean that it's your, it's your, it's your flesh. That, because, of course, you were born in iniquity where we born. So the matter of flesh is not to say, to, you cannot deny that there is flesh in you. Okay, until we become like him, you will you will have to deal with it. You have to tame it every day. So let there not be a time when we will, because of you know, we want to feel spiritual, sound spiritual, we want to feel aligned with God, we ignore the place of this is a work in progress at whatever level you are. It may be the day of five naira now. I will. It may be the day of 15 naira. It does not mean I should despise the person who is still struggling with five naira. So at every and any level, I think the word is grace. And that grace is the workings of God on the inside. It meant, uh, was it Jairus now? You know, I said, if you believe, I said, I, I have my own belief. I came, I came to you, I ran after you. Okay? It wasn't you who came to me. If there was no, if there was nothing propelling me, why should I seek you in the first place? But now you are here. It seems like I'm struggling now to even believe that you are able to do it. Because there was a new development. But he said, I'm already, at least I made the move in the first place. Please now help my own Thank you. I no, appreciate uh, me. All right, brought DG. Please tell us your full names and then. Uh, Sorry, is that all I'm seeing there? Mm. Okay, okay. Uh, my name is Deji Olatunde. Um, just a few things I want to point out. Um, first of all, I think John, Christ said, if you love me, you obey my commands. There was, I think, was it in chapter 14? He mentioned it like three times. And so, obedience to his commands is like the true measure of the love we have for him. But a part in the Bible also says that the grace of God has appeared to all men, all men, all, Christian, Muslim, whatever it is, teaching them, you know, to obey, right? And that grace, it has everything that is needed for life and for godliness. But most times, because we don't truly understand the capacity of what we have, we tend to struggle. So it's, it's, it's there. And sometimes it's as easy as just making that statement, Lord, I believe, and acting out on that faith. And then we'll see God come through for us. So it really has nothing to do with your past. Yes, previous obedience would grant you, it would make the journey easier. Because like David, you can say, oh, he killed, I killed the lion, yeah, I killed the lion, and so you, you come down. So that's what previous, it makes, it makes you taking that step easy. The first time you saw maybe 100,000, you 
might have thought about it and it will be a challenge. But the next time you sow 200, you say, I sold it with 100, I believe that you, you know, you've got some is wrong that one. This one won't be difficult. But it's as easy as making that decision. But what happens is when we give too much time or flesh to dabble into it, give that person this amount, Lord, okay, I, if, I mean, I believe it's you. Even if it's not you, I'm going in faith that it is you. And God who sees your heart and the intention of the heart, which is what he listens to beyond your actions and everything, he will say, okay, even though it was a mistake, and he made it because he believed it was me, he would find a way, just like your Google map, when you miss your route, it will redirect it and get you to that you know, destination. So I think it's important for us to understand that if the Bible says that the grace of God has appeared to all men, teaching us to say no. It's, it's a simple, it's just a, it's teaching us to say no. Just no. And just the same way we can say no to ungodliness, we can say yes. And we act upon it. And when we do that, God will always back us up. That's just all I'm going to say. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, Pastor Lagibu is raising his hand. All right, thank you so much. I want to first and foremost, my name is Femi. After this one, I think we will move so that I'll say something, then we can take more input again. All right. My name is Femi Olaju. Right. Um, to answer the Chukwu Lucas question, if I got that question correctly, you're saying that for instance, there's a worship session, right? And then when you feel very ecstatic in that worship, then you sense that there's a call to obedience. And you are not sure whether it's because you're excited or not. That is it wrong to ask for confirmation. To answer that question, I'll say it's not wrong. Especially in a time where a lot of people do not really know what the voice of God is. So that's the first thing that you need to show. Uh, what your your work with God, how often has it not come to you like that before? Right. So a lot of people don't even know what the words of God is, which is why a lot of people assume they do, but the fact is that many people do not know how to hear the voice of God. So we won't tell if it is the Lord speaking at the time. So if you can do a small discipleship class with somebody who knows how to hear the voice of God, maybe that will help. But to ask, to answer, it's not wrong to say confirmation, especially when you are sure. Because um, there are many cases of people who have um, gone like, with excitement like that and they, they pierce themselves in so many sorrows. Case in point, there is a brother that is known to, to some of us right about 10, 12 years ago, a long time ago. He was supposed to go for his master's abroad. Right? And um, I think that time it was about one point something million that he needed. So somehow they raised the money for him and he had that money just for him to process his visa and ticket and stuff. And then in a service like that, so he felt led to so that money that was crowdfunded um, to a man of God. So nobody could convince him otherwise. So he gathered the money that was crowdfunded for him and then he sold it. The man has not left that level more than 12 years ago. He's still at the same place. Same time expected. I don't know, maybe God will eventually honor his faith and stuff like that. But the fact is that, regardless of the lesson you will pick from that, the lesson is that it's not bad. If you really want to obey God, it's not bad. So then ask for confirmation, Lord, if it is you, right? Can you please? Especially if you are not sure, like I said, if you don't know whether he's the one talking, please ask for confirmation. All right, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I'm sure what everything that we say, there are different things, not just in answering that question. A lot of people have touched a lot of other things. Amen. Praise the Lord. The question that is coming to God, where is it coming from? God knows. If it is from uh, somebody that wants to know, learn, or somebody that is saying, is it God because you want to dodge, he knows all those things. Praise the Lord. Yes. That other one, like, let me end it and sin, and every other person has seen, God will always help you. Like I say that, sometimes God will show you experiences to help you when there is doubt. 
But be sure it's not because you don't even want to do it. You understand? So where he's coming from, let's open up our hearts and then just tell him, see the Holy Ghost as a friend, as a partner. Right? Sometimes I will tell the Holy Spirit that, help me. Sometimes some things you tell me to do, I may not even do them. But I need your help to do them. As you don't, don't just go there. Hey, hey, God, you know, just go. Don't go to him with a form. Just, just, just like you talk to a bosom friend. I asked him for help. There was a time I was, I knew there was a word of obedience I need to give. An obedience, definite obedience. I didn't even know what it was. But I was just pressed in my spirit and I was praying. And I told him, You can tell me now and you're not even do it. But please help me. Let me get to know this specific and then help me to do it. That's why I said it's a work with the Holy Spirit. You are working hand in hand. It's a partnership. Tell him your fears. Tell him your hope. And then tell him your... A lot of things that God, God should tell you. He may not even do them. He first even prepares you for that word that is coming. Praise the Lord. So let's be sincere. In the era of marriage, for those of us that believe that you have to be led, God will tell you who to marry. I, when I, there was no lady I told him. The lady you bring, just help me to... Just help me. Because that kind of open, when you open it, you know, some of you have criteria before you go to the Holy Ghost. But this one, you are going without criteria. They can be willing somebody in the shop right on the wish here can say, this is the person. You know? <laughs> so, so, that's it. You leave a blanket check. You know, that's why it depends on how, the extent to which you want to go with God. You can come with your list and then, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> come with your list and then God will try, try, try to look for a list somewhere that fits in and give you. But whatever you see along with that, your list, Abby, you have to manage it along too. You know, but I say empty. Blanket. And sometimes I'll be washing uh, in the midst of having this conversation with God. This is a frank talk. I was watching TV one time. I saw a young man got married with somebody on a wish chair. You know, they were doing the wedding, and the lady was in a wish, and they got married. I had to go back in prayer again. I said, Lord, Lord, I need your help. You know, so <laughs> you understand. You know, these are you know, these are sincerity. Just be sincere and open. A lot of us, even though the Holy Ghost are not sincere, we come with a form. Sometimes, want to show the Holy Ghost we can obey, and that's what Dejan Ni was saying. What is the robber say? He was shouting, What? Grace, grace, grace. He was shouting. He said, Who are thou, O great mountain? You shall become a plain. He shall bring forth the headstone with shouting, Grace, 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 grace. God took Zerubbabel and he marched him inside the Holy Ghost. He marched him. So the Zerubbabel that is coming now is a man immersed in the Holy Ghost. Can you see? He said, In the day of his power, is it your own power? Eh? Or in the day of your power? In the day of his own what? Power. What you do is to you align with his what? Power. You see how this things. So that's why we are learning this thing. Because they are like, Femi was trying to point out, they are counterfeit voices. It's even very destructive. It has even caused more destruction in our Christian faith than even, uh, even wishes and wizards that we are talking about. Some people have gone to kill their mother because the man of God tell them by discernment that the woman is a wish. We declare in violation, declare what of God. Say, honor your father and what? He said, this is honor your believing father. Or your born again mother. Your father and mother. He said, honor them. Whether they are born again or what? They are not born again. Someone said, this money I have is God that gave me this money. I cannot spend it on unbeliever. When the same Bible said, God makes his son to rise on the good and the evil. And he's ready to come on the good, just and the unjust. There are things that God gives to all. Then there are things that he reserves for his children. Money is what God gives to all. Even an atheist, God can prosper an atheist. An atheist. God can put his blessing on an atheist. To make money. Are you hearing me? And I've told us here before in one of those summits and some teachings I did that God gave the earth to man. God did not give the earth to believers. He gave the earth to man before God started demanding obedience and righteousness. After God created the earth, he created man. He marched all them together and said, have dominion over this, over this. As man, he had not asked the man for anything. He said, if you will follow me, if you will obey me, if you will honor me, God gave the earth to what? To man. It is in Genesis 2, after he had given the earth to man, that God started 
demanding obedience and what? Righteousness. He says you should not eat this tree, eat that one. But God gave the earth to man. Please, let's not forget. So anybody that will engage the forces of creativity and mastery can break into the world. Under the blessing of God. Please do the young believer that is doing agriculture, who will bring the rain and the weather for him? Is it not God? So the earth is given to man. Then the kingdom is given to believers. So when we talk about kingdom, we we'll say, okay, we cannot talk believers and everything like that. And God can prosper an unbeliever, can prosper a believer on the earth. It's a level playing ground. Sometimes even unbelieving, even it is God who give them things so that he can draw them by his goodness and kindness. So that's how it is. So if you want to do well, you want to pay school fee, you want to do well, you want to be married and do well, go and engage the forces of creativity and mastery. The world comes from two places. Creativity and what? Mastery. He said that you are creative. The, everything everybody is doing, you do it in a more creative way. Or outright creativity, creative genius. You do things that nobody has done before. Everybody will just follow you. Or mastery. What everybody do is a normal thing, but you do it well. Look at to cook rice. Mastery. The restaurant you go is the restaurant that are cooking very well. You see, they open a new restaurant now. It takes their food now. Before you know, everybody's rushing there. People are sending their drivers there. Mastery. If you want to employ anybody, you want spend that do it well. So mastery and creativity. That's how God designed this physical cosmic earth. That's why you see the the gravity. You do this, you know what will come out. If you plant a mango, you know it's a mango that will come out. No matter they speaking in tongue, an apple will not grow. Because you see this mango. Praise the Lord. Now, I talk about the two... Uh, okay, now, in the human life, I will round off this conversation, then I will not take uh, impute like that. So, question and then other contribution. Now, these are the three... I say the grace is the spirit moving. Like we were talking about uh, Zerubbabel. God took Zerubbabel and in, by immersion, immersed him inside the Holy, inside the Spirit, and now became the Spirit moving. I see Genesis one to the Spirit of God was moving. In those motions of the Spirit that God began to do His work, let there be light. This and that. Then the New Testament as well. Jesus came, and Jesus was empowered by the Holy Ghost, baptized, and then He was full of the Holy Ghost. He was tempted. He returned in the power of the Holy Ghost before the Son of God could start His public testament life on earth. And to form the church, he said, wait until the Spirit comes. And they want to say, we are not under the law, we are under grace. We are now on, the, the, the law was Moses. The law was Moses, but grace is who? It's Jesus and the Holy Ghost. So, so now, we are now under grace. So, I say that the, mush, the Spirit is the motion of grace. And then the fruit of grace, you know, what grace delivers to us is what we want to look at now. The human life is sin. There are three things about the human life. After the fall of man, human evil, human weaknesses, and then human life in God. Human evil, human weaknesses. These are two different things. God can tolerate human weaknesses. He will never accept human evil. Evil, God will crush it. But weaknesses, God will help. So when the Holy Ghost is a helper, he's a helper in the context of human weaknesses. Human weakness, human evil, human weaknesses, and then life in God. God, you know. So now, and the, this is where the move, where you see the three motions of the Holy Spirit. You know? I want to relate it in context with it. You see, give you an example of uh, outright uh, uh, human wickedness. I say God will never take it. God will crush it. But where God sees weakness, is, this one is a weakness, then God will come with help and strength and support. So the grace of God, the motions of the Holy Ghost. So when, don't forget, I have, in some of the teachings we've done here under the seven spirit of God, that the Holy Ghost does not interface with fallen spirit. You cannot bind Satan with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will empower you. You are the one that will rebuke Satan. Praise the Lord. You see, you shall receive power. He empowers you to do that way. You are the one. It's Jesus that dealt with the fallen spirit. It's Jesus that dealt with Satan, not the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has no interface with fallen spirit. So, when the Holy Ghost came to earth, the only person that the Holy Ghost had business with on earth is you. So, the Holy Ghost equip you, train you, tutor you, and raise you for the things that you must do. Because the human life is a big responsibility in God. 
God created human beings. There were things human beings would do. That's why no, I say God, no, I found grace. No, I worked with God. No, I was going to build an ark. No, I was going to do a lot of things. Abraham that God called. Abraham found grace. You see in scripture, men that found grace. Abraham, Moses. Moses found grace. You see, I found grace in my sight. When time God mentioned grace, see a whole bulky assignment that is on the other side. All those men in scripture. Because all of them, you see Noah? Noah found grace. Exodus 33, say, I know you by name and you have found grace in my sight, Moses. You see, Abraham found grace. All of these men, you see, that say they found grace like that. So, the grace of our God, Jesus Christ. You know, the weight of what was on Jesus. And that's who had that whole great mountain before Zerubbabel. He said, your hand began building it. He said, your hand will finish you. You bring forth the headstone with shoutings, grace, 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 grace. You see, Zerubbabel had a massive work he was going to build. So you see these three. So human evil will give us example uh, in, in scripture. This one is outright evil. If you see the case of uh, those men that God said, this, this be the calf that brought us out. Was it the calf that brought them? Was it the calf? They knew. You see, conscious human evil, God will not take him. And that's why God looked at that Adam transgression. He knew. He said she was deceived. God said, okay, God agreed with her. But Adam. Because that's why Adam is the one that owned that transgression. It's not the woman that put you here. According to scripture, that transgression was Adam. Adam, the woman first thing, she was deceived. But the Bible says Adam was not deceived. So the sin of the woman and the sin of Adam were not, were not the same sin. Adam, his own consciousness was involved. It was a conscious sin, evil. That's why okay? those who have not seen after the similitude of Adam's transgression, Adam transgression is different from Eve transgression. This one is you, volition was evil. He know, he knew. That one is not the days of ignorance. He knew. All through scripture you see there. So you see conscious human evil. Or when the God is telling you something, you are not doing it because of those one. God will not take it from you. But if it's weakness, so when grace comes, the mo- when Holy Ghost generates this motion, you know, that's why he said that uh, Paul, look at Romans 7 and Romans 8. He said, I want to do this, but I find something in me, I cannot do it, right? He says, thank God through the Lord Jesus Christ. See, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from what? The law of sin and grace. But before that scripture was written, if you look at Romans, he says, what I don't want to do, I see what? You see, that one is human weakness. That one will find help. But this one that they say, in Romans 1, how did Romans 1 end verse 21? He say, all of those sins that they don't only do them, they have pleasure in them that do it. A lot of people are struggling with sin and immorality everywhere, all over the world. They want to come out of it. Some people have raised up billions of dollars. They say they want to make a sexual immorality to spread all over the whole world. Can you see? So the one that is falling into some weaknesses and his conscience is breaking, oh, I've done that. I don't, it's, well, God can help that one. But this one, outright evil, God will kill it. He said, the grace of God, thank God for, look at the scripture, bro, did you open up again? Title, he said, the grace of God has appeared, what? To a man, teaching us what? Teaching us that what? Deny what? When grace comes, it will tutor and train you to crush evil. You see it? It's not a permissi- permissibility. How do you call it? Passim- pa- how do you call that English? Not permissi- permissibility or something. I wanted to put for our English student. You know, it's to permit evil. But to give you a fair landing for evil, he will come to crush it. To crush human evil. This is why the Holy Ghost come. Human evil is very is very big. You can't do it. Evil will not allow you to do it. He said, the law of sin is written in my members. Now what Paul say? I want to say it's written in my members. I can't do it. Jesus said, all these things that I'm doing for you, your sin, Father has forgiven you all these resources that I make available for you. Even if you want to engage it, you cannot engage it. Because your 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 pain is so much wrought is evil. You still need the helper. The Holy Ghost will help you. So what you see what grace does? It will help you to crush human evil in your life. Outright evil. You know, some people they are even born again, but you know, you see them do something, say this is wickedness. You go to their offices. You know this is a wicked man. And he comes with us to be singing a, a song in church and everything. But if you sit down in his office, you know this is a wicked man. You see that one? You leave church. Maybe would they do your it's from maybe church service, you leave and go to hell. God will never take human evil. 
you will never. You see those men, uh, the sons of uh, is it Jacob now that uh, no uh, sons of uh, those two that were giving birth when they say they want to produce the sperm they will withdraw. They were supposed to, Judah. They were supposed to raise uh, his children to their this. God said it was weakness. He killed them. He killed them. Ananias and Sapphira. This was a conscious human evil. He killed them in the assembly. There was no more to preach repentance. You see, conscious. You see, sin against the father is what? It's forgiving. Sin against the son, Abi. Those are days of ignorance. Because when the Holy Ghost comes, He will bring the reality of this thing to you. He will open it to you. He will give you the understanding of this thing. And then you choose ahead to go and do it. That will become the blasphemy against God and against the Holy Spirit. After the Holy Spirit has communicated truth to you, the Holy Ghost will communicate truth to you in the way Jesus on earth cannot communicate it to you. You are just hearing, you are hearing parable, you are hearing teaching. But the Holy Ghost will bring it to you. His Spirit will communicate it to your spirit. And then you now go ahead and do it. God will not take that from you. You see why I say sin against the Father? I, the Father maybe is talking from heaven. He give you Lord, give you everything. Like that. Jesus will come. Jesus, the Father is in heaven speaking to us. Jesus came and stood on the earth talking to us. But beyond talking from heaven, beyond standing and talking to the earth, he entered into our being, entered into us, and then spoke to us in our nation. So we understand what is going on. And then you now go ahead and do it. God will kill you. Not only in this world, he will kill you in the world to come. Evil. God does not take evil. So grace is not a license for more what? Evil. It's not a license, not an atmosphere for sin. I say human evil. To crush evil. You see, you see the emotions of grace. It begins to empower you. It begins to strengthen. You say, if you through the spirit, Romans 8, mortify. He say, kill. It put you to death. The deed of the flesh. What? Grace, put a knife in your hand to slay evil out of your life. Are you hearing me? Please don't joke with this thing. Uh, dispensing of grace, uh, liberty. Uh, like that. People are impregnating themselves on because they are under grace. I say grace is the spirit moving. Grace is the emotions of the spirit. The foundation that all things in God rest upon. Grace. Grace. But the substance of grace is the word of God, the word of life. In the bigger definition, the substance of grace is Jesus Christ. And who is Jesus Christ? God's life in human being. God in human body. The human creation is to have God's life as the human life. That is the end point of grace. But the human creation is to have God's life as the human life. The human life inside of you now is the God kind of life. They've seen you, they have seen God. That's the end point of grace. That's it. Begin from somewhere. He helps you to crush evil. He comes to a place, he empowers you to deal with weaknesses. He says, No, every high priest is taken from amongst men. He's ordained for men. Uh, Hebrews 5, right? Taken off from amongst men is ordained for men in things pertaining to men. Who can have compassion on the ignorant, on them that are out of the way? Seeing that he himself is compassed with weaknesses. He's able to help fellow people that are weak. The Bible says Jesus himself was tempted at all points without sin so that he can understand our own temptation and try so that he can help us in our temptations. You see, human weaknesses. The Bible talks about Hebrews 11. See, out of weaknesses, they were, they do, uh, that I mean, you see, out of weaknesses, they were, they were what? He said they were made strong. And they put to flight the enemies of the aliens. Paul went to God. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is perfected in what? In weakness. That's for the person that wants God, but is weak. In case you want him, but you are weak. God can't help you. But when he's outright evil, you don't desire him. That one is the silence of judgment that we should respect. You see the three notions of grace. I say human evil, human weaknesses, then God. Then grace helps you to crush human evil. Rise above human weaknesses and help you to rise into God. You see, all the fivefold ministry they are given for what? For the perfection of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edification of the body until we all of us arrive where in the fullness of what? And the maturity and the stature of what? Christ. God has conformed us to the image of his son. He wants to see his son in us. He wants to see the human, the God life become the human life. That is the end point of grace. 
It's a teaching or that denying on calling him, brother. You thank you. Say no to ungodliness and say yes to God, godliness. Denying ungodliness, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly. We should live the God life in this world, in this present world, here and now. Grace, grace, grace. The Holy Ghost come generate motion. What has what are the motion and works? Begin to come inside you. Begin to give you instruction. And like I say, he speaks. Can give you his word. Little, little instructions like that. We sometimes call them little. Nothing little with God. You are the one that says some things are small and there are some things are big. Before God, nothing is small, nothing is big. Because God does not have size. And so God does not recognize size. That's why he made the dust or some things you can only see with microscope. And he made something like the mahogany that you can see from a distance. Like this little thing. This look at there. Two brothers were talking behind the kitchen. And God took it as an eternal covenant. He said, Esau had despised his birthright. Was he talking to God? Huh? We are there in the prayer meeting. Is it not him and Jacob? Even he will stand before his father and say, Don't mind, I didn't tell him anything. No, I'm just playing. When that thing did, it was that the foundation of that that angels began to orchestrate that working. They started working on the mother to ensure that that word came to pass. So some things some guy do is in response. Some motions you see, the motions of the spirit, angels are inside the motions of the spirit. Some all human beings are inside. God can begin to move angels, move men to do certain in response to certain things that's not done. That's why they made the man very blind. He cannot see. He was not the oldest man. Abraham lived longer than him. Abraham could see when he was dying. But the, to fulfill that word, they made sure that his eyes were very dim. It's not only the woman's uh, case with the wife, or even they dim his eyes, he can't see. But if he can see, there's no way to pour that oil on Jacob. Just to fulfill that word. You see, the manifold working, so that's what we call the motions of what? Of grace. Movement of the spirit. It's still part of the motion. Jacob, I will dim. And then, what do I say? To build you in the life of God. Also, much I will, will know a lot of those things. A lot of us are knowing a lot of things here. You see, I just highlighted everywhere. Go and read uh, Romans 6. He said that, he said that uh, we were buried with him in baptism so that we will be raised with him in newness of life. He said, just like uh, Christ, you know, was raised from the dead by the glory of, of, of the Father. That's why they talk about grace, mo- grace much. But if you go and read that whole of Romans 6, he says he said that uh, we're seeing about grace much more about before they say all those things. Go and look at the context of everything we're saying. He's still this thing to deal with human evil, to deal with human weaknesses, and then to handle what God in human life. That's the work of the Holy Ghost on it. Thank God for all of those atmosphere of the spirit and a lot of other things. There are other blessings that come out of it. But the key and the central work. God wants to look to earth and see human beings living like the way they are living in heaven. That's what he saw in Matthew. He said, your kingdom what? God. That's the central body in the heart of God. He wants to see human beings live the way he created them to live. All the big, big things you are talking about. Is you and I that is talking about them. Praise the When he talk, he said, have you seen my servant Job? He said, a man that fears me. He's always looking to the ways of his children. That his children are pleasing God. That was all. He said, Jesus, he said, this is my beloved son. In whom what? I'm pleased with this one. God looked at his life. God saw the way he had been living for the past 30 years. I said, ah, look at him. Look at Daniel. He said, Daniel was the one that fears God. He said, you give me vegetable. She be initiated the sacrifice. Give us vegetable and stuff like that. And then God honored the sacrifice and obedience when they needed need. And God gave them revelation. He said, Daniel, oh man, highly esteemed in the heaven. He said, can you take heed to the life we live? Like, don't just go and make noise and the way that matter. The way you speak to the next person. Very important. Very, very nobody's there. So those of us that have staff, you know, maybe you have staff, you have domestic staff, domestic. God is washing. Water is water everywhere. If you put it in a cup, it's water, right? Will the content change? If you put it inside a, a nylon, will it change? If you put it in a bowl, will it change? If you have God inside. The way you talk to David Abubakar will not be different from the way you handle that little powerless boy or girl. Maybe that is under you. Maybe as a servant. Serving you. That's it. He said, judge yourself. If not, you are yourself, you'll be reprobate. 
if I come to you and see the way I, I don't relate with you, I don't centrally form my opinion about you based on the way you relate with me. Ah, this person, no. I looked at you, I see the way you relate with others. In the body and also look at you in the spirit. I see the way, all of you, I see the way you relate with your fellow sisters. I see the way you relate with your fellow brothers. You put two brothers together, they can't work together, they are correct. Just simple assignment. You still need to see grace. 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 Put them on the on project, they argue, two, two brothers. Put them on a the simple project, they can't do it. Somebody say, let's do it this way. No, no, it's not. Let's do it my own way. You see, you see that self way. Eh? The project, okay, it should be like this. No, I was like, eh, he's, only, he's, he's not listening. I'm trying to explain. Okay, I mean, I can't. Everything, forget all those explanations. It's just what? Self what? Self has only one eye. It's only see yourself. Can't see another. You see, when couples have issue now, the man will come and tell you. you he'll be telling you from morning to night everything that he has been doing in that marriage. You'll not hear anything about the lady as well. Eh? I've done this one that or the woman will come. This is the man. He's everything apart. Cannot say this one, the man has done everything. You know why? It's the same thing. It will not let you to see what another. There are things the man has done. If you will remove the veil of self-will, you see those things are things you you can begin appreciating those things and become a point to begin to bring more transformation to your marriage. Or say certain things the lady has done. It will be a, 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 a kind of a starting point, a foundation for you to start a renewal, thought renewal process again. Sometimes the way people think, you see people are having issues, they thought it like this. Turn the same thought pattern and turn it like that. They everything, all the problem has gone. All the mighty, mighty things. Just change the same thought pattern. Praise the Lord. You see, you should learn to, you see, there are things you should learn to magnify. For instance, when I give birth to all my children, God blessed us with four beautiful children. It was my mother in law that took care of all of them. Like that. So all if we give birth, you can stay with us for two years, we'll go to school. Each of them will start in school at the age of two, two years. It was my mother in law. And then that alone, I said, this uh, woman, okay, let's say private, there's this, there's nothing she can ever do on it. I say use the word nothing. Speak before. There's nothing she can ever do or end that can get me offended. That can get me angry. Whether I like it or not. Because of the way, you see, it's judicial, it's not judgment, Abby. It's weight. There are some labor, there are some sacrifice. You should deliberately learn to what? Amplify it. Praise the Lord. So these are the things that we must culture. These are the things the Holy Ghost will, The Holy Ghost comes, you start cultivating things inside. You start building. No one build an ark. Uh, Moses uh, built tabernacle and, and everything. But when grace comes, you are not going to build. It's not a venue that you will build. You will build the life of God inside. You will build life. He said, for God so loved the world, whoever believes in you will not pray. What are you going to have? He's going to build life. Then in the energy and under the anointing of Lagos, you can do other things. You can build your auditoriums. You can build your fellowships. You can take your ministry to another level. But the Holy Ghost, what he does, he builds life. Life of God. You see grace? So all those arguments, grace, definition of grace. You see, I say human evil. A lot of people, that's where all the argument about grace. All right? Uh -huh. You know, your body is the one that sin. Your spirit is not the one that sin. Uh, God, there's allowance is God. God has forgiven us before we even do it. And You don't need to argue. God knows the motive of the one that is talking. If that one is somebody that loves God, desires God, but he has you weaknesses in God will help you. But if the person is speaking from outright evil, God will arrange crushing blows for the person in the journey of life and then will crush the person finally in the world to come. God has no room for evil. Evil. No. It's outright no. That's why for the one sin of man, one sin, one sin of man, every other sin is in that one sin. One sin of man, it them in, in Eden's garden. That sin brought God to earth to come and suffer. The Son of God to die on the cross. One, not two. It's one transgression. One transgression. And if you look at uh, sin, is very costly. Sin is the most expensive thing in life. God, the price that was paid for it. That's it was the most expensive thing. See, it's very expensive to God. Very expensive. 
God paid, gave his son. Why did he kill his son? He gave his son for transgression. In all of eternity, the most expensive thing. Why would he kill his son? He paid for it. He paid my sin. He paid, paid, paid. He paid, he paid for it. And then, look at it now. Those of us that are born again. Hmm? Those of us that are born again, see, God will fully bear the expense for your sin. You are not going to bear any expense. He carried the weight and then, but those that are not born again, those are the ones that will pay for their sin in eternal judgment. You see, the payment. So what God paid for. So for you, now look at all your tra- the most expensive. You didn't pay for it. God paid for it. And then how can you now turn around again and now use God? Now begin to use the name of God to be now begin to generate theology around it. To give yourself a soft landing. First Peter 3 says, He that will love life. You see, and see many days. You see, let him be free in his tongue from evil. And his mouth from speaking God. He said, Let him hate evil. First Peter 3 says, He that will love life and see good day. Let him refrain his tongue from evil. And his lips that he speak no guy. The next verse. Let him hate evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. The next verse. He said, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against him. That's say, Who am I? If you have before, meet your brother. Oh, this is what I'm going to. Let's join hands together. There is no pride here. All of us are wearing suit, dressing up a wound inside. No. If you have a wound, you go and show a doctor they will heal you. Your brother, join hands with me. Three brothers are going through the same thing. None of them is talking to themselves. And all of them continue the same thing for the next 10 years. But three of them are going, if they talk to themselves, within six years, one year, they will have found solution for that something. And the remaining nine years, they will have been free. But each person is wearing jacket. Say, brother, this is where it hurts me. My wife is out. This is where I'm what I'm wondering. I need you. Tell, let people know that you need them. God created you to live on help. There's another faith. I don't want to go into that. There's that faith message now that see if uh, you stand as an ally. God created you to live on help, even from the beginning. He said, I'll make him a helper. A helpmate. And when the Holy Ghost was going, he said, What? He called him. How did he call him? I'll send the helper. You need help in life. In your prayer life, maybe to deal with uh, maybe sexual weaknesses here and there. You need help. But uh, let's join hands together. This is the challenge I'm having. Many couples, if they sit down and talk to themselves like that, and everybody wants you want to stay on your own island and then be living from there. No, let's come together. These are my weaknesses. I'm, I'm you, I'm a man. I have a lot of weaknesses. I just spoke with my wife yesterday. I know I said something like that. We didn't need our cover. These are the basic weaknesses that I have. This is where I need your strength to come into my life more. And she told me about her, herself too. So that way you leave no room for the evil one to come in. Are we together? So what are the three motions that we talked about? Again? That's it. So before we pray, I'm going to take one or two. You have a question, you have a contribution in the light of uh, this word. Paul said that first Corinthians fifteen ten, I'll just read some scripture. Say, by the grace of God, I am what I was. The life, that life that he had built, that life called Apostle Paul. Eh? Say, by the grace of God, I've been built into this life, and this life is built in me. Say, by the grace of God, I am what I I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labor. Look, can you see labor again? You no, know, I told you about if you see God, you see plenty of work. He said, But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was what? What with me? First Corinthians 15 10. Okay. And then in 2 Corinthians 12 9. And he said, My grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weaknesses. Lastly, I say, in, in, in the grace of God, you will crush human evil. Administer God into human weaknesses and fully live in the eternal we plan and provisions of God for human creation. Praise the Lord. Any question or contribution before pray? Before pray. Grace in God empowers you to rise above human evil. 
above human weaknesses and rising to God and his eternal provision for human lives, living and abiding in God. Do you have any question contribution before we pray? All right, bro, DJ. Okay, okay. Okay, bro, Peter then, bro, DJ. Okay. Okay, sir. So, um, So, and I believe as a believer, we all want to get higher. If we are reward, maybe you should be reward oriented if we are like reward being. If, if you are thinking about reward now, that should I, for example, God has okay, the old meetings. So, and I believe that God speak. It's not God has God has spoke yesterday. He still speaks. So now that God has told me maybe a year ago that I should be doing something, and this year I didn't really receive the way I receive. Uh, what now? Does it mean that I should not do it? Does it mean that I should stop or until? Does it mean that until I, I, I mean, should I, uh, do I need to hear God before I do that thing? Based on because you, I, I, I suppose you just read those things. You, you said something that really touched me, sir. You were like, what God, if, if God asks you to do something, that thing actually carry weight in, in eternity. I mean, it carry weight in God. That the one we just feel like doing, but even doing righteousness, you mentioned righteousness. So I believe that anything righteousness is something good. So I want to know, if you are now reward based, like oriented, I think we should, if you are going to distinguish from, I, should, I, I think we should pursue that one that is more higher. So my question now is that, as a minister, God has like, I want to answer that question, as a minister, oh, God said, be doing meetings. I've, I've said, I, 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 okay, for example, God said, I've sent it to nations. Does it mean that any invitation that comes, I, you need to accept it, or you need to pray to God before you accept the invitation? As obviously that they are sent the invitation based on relationship. So does it mean that based on relationship, you see God that is now, so there, I just want to know that, which should we be reward oriented now, or should we wait till God speak to us, or which we can still, even because both the two have reward. But just that one have Aya. So, and I believe that we all love that Aya one. Me, I love that Aya one. So I want to ask, sir, as a minister of God, 
that God has called you to you know, do this and that and that. But at, when I was undergraduate, the Lord said I should. I showed a meeting again in our fifth anniversary. I think around that time I spent like 400, 450. And but around that time, all the money in my account went for the program. The money that even came out and supported it was all for 100k. So, so now, for things like that, I tell people think that maybe, I just want to know that which one are we going to do out of the two subjects? Okay, plenty, plenty question in there. Um, that first one you said, let me be fast so that we can, I want us to go into extensive prayer. Uh, take our all our contribution, then we'll pray. That first one you asked that uh, you see, money in your account, five people are calling. You see, money is always tied to a purpose. That maybe money is in your account, somebody is calling, does not mean you are going to give that person. It's good to have a general heart of giving. But in also, that giving, we must start learning to know that money windows is tied to a purpose. Maybe something is coming to know that God is holding that money for. You never can tell. And maybe somebody that is calling you for the money now is uh, you are not even the one that God has designed to even help that person. Generally good to help. But if it's something that uh, is not uh, you know within the capacity to do and it's not affect other things, you can always okay, I want to support here and there, but so that you should not have this conscience that I have one as one asking for when I did not give. You understand? You know how to tell a person I don't have money. You can tell I'm not able to support now. Are you hearing me? You know, I, I'm not able to support now. So, so, you know, it's okay, I don't have money, or I'm lying. No, no, you don't have to even say, okay, about mention money or something. Sorry, I'm not able to support now, or things like that. So, that's how it works. There's a man of, a, a man of God that was going through something. I called another minister of God. It's in the Jacob that wrote it in her book. You know, she's the one that wrote this book. It's general of intercession. She wrote quite a book. I read one. And when she called her, she now prayed for the man of God and the thing was lifted. And then God met her and God was not happy with her. Prayer is not giving. You see, this person is disobedient and I'm the one that initiated those things to deal with him and teach him certain things. Now you have prayed for the person and thing was going through financial crisis. I say, and now the thing is lifted. So we must learn to be discerning. Even you, you come to God for things sometimes. God knows how he, when he gives you things. And when it doesn't give you the same thing, so that's how it is. So sometimes some people ask you, maybe the other person God has designed, they should meet them or stuff like that. So you just need to be sensitive where to put limited resources so that we don't have this this religion. It could disturb me in the past. I didn't know how to give. I love, I wanted to give. So you just give, give people. It's okay. At the days of learning, God can allow that. It will help to also open up your heart. And after some time, begin to streamline your. You're, you're giving, right? Uh-huh. Where you somebody needs ten thousand, you are not assisting a person, and that person has seen the person with hundred thousand. So that's how. It's then the other ones you ask is, uh, is uh, that uh, okay? Do we go for reward? Do we go for instruction? You just open in God. Don't everything in God. You should go for it. Are you hearing? So not kind of like uh, okay because of the of course. We should we serve God for the world. You know this the other I just for the sake of, I just love us I love God. I just want to do it here. We don't serve God for any motive, but in serving God, there are things God said He wants to do them for us. Those things must be held high as much as we hold God. You see, that comes to God more believe that is a reward of them that seek him. They be say, What shall be done for the man that killed this Goliath? God created human being in the way that will be driven by what God placed ahead of us. Not just okay, or just God alone seated there. No. God made us in the manner that if God missed any man, God will first of all tell the things that I want to do for that man. That's how God designed that He Himself will lead human being. Even for the Son of God, He said, Who for the joy that was said before Him? He said, I go to the cross because I love my Father. He's there, He's stated. But also in the midst of it, or He said, For the joy that was said before Him, endured what? The cross, which is our all of us, our own redemption. God met Abraham. And God said, depart, I'll, I'll make you, the first thing God told him, I'll make you a great nation. I'll make your name great. And everything, God told Abraham, the same thing he did with Adam and Eve, or the same thing he did with Abraham, and that's the pattern. Right? He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right? You see, that's the first message for us. So, God told uh, Abraham, what he will do for Abraham, before God started demanding specific obedience from Abraham. It was in Genesis chapter 15, 
that God said, I am your exceeding great reward. In 17, he said, walk before me and be you perfect. God began demanding a measure of righteousness from Abraham. He said, he said I'll depart from country to a land of free. I said, I'll make your name great. God will unveil, you know, Abraham was in God. Abraham was looking for what? A city that what? Had foundation. That's how it is. And then when Adam, from the story of Adam, we all know it, that, uh, okay, let me know. See. From the story of Adam, God told Adam the things he would do for him before he started demanding obedience from Abraham, Adam. He said, you have dominion and everything. Then he said, boss, come, we are still other things. Because I say, well, tend the garden. Start giving him work. And then you must have to obey me. Don't eat this tree, don't eat that tree. But God only starts his journey with man by telling you what he will do for you. And that begins to set the vision for your life. You start moving that way. Paul said, now it's in store for me a crown what? of righteousness, which God will what? give me. But in the days of some certain days, season in our life, those are the things that will hold us. Those are the things. They who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. Praise the Lord. So that's how it is. All right, Brother DJ. This guy will appreciate him. Okay. okay. All right, Brother Chizo. Okay. Praise the Lord. Pastor, thank you so much for this opportunity. Actually, you're welcome. Talking about grace, grace is, is not a doctrine. Grace is Jesus. The Bible says that, that grace and truth came through Jesus. That means grace is a person. Praise God. And it's, it's beyond, like you say, it's beyond unlimited favor. It's, it's the moving of the spirits, like the right way to say it. And um, there are so many things about grace that um, you say that uh, grace can teach. That God has have, have a channel towards teaching us. Of godliness and what he loves, and we stop by with our righteous ways. You know, in all these things about instructions of righteousness and everything, one important thing is uh, who do we see God as? You know, why this instruction is hard to us is because we tend to see God as a difficult person. But the Bible, when Paul was preaching in Acts 20, he says, that one thing that God told him to do is to teach towards repentance towards God. Acts 20 21. He said repentance of repentance towards God. One short thing that should happen to us is uh, that we should have a good perspective on God. A good, a good, a good view. The Bible says that Sarah judged God faithfully. Sarah perceived God to be good. Praise God. So we must come to that realization that God is good and that. Anything he wants from me is for my own advantage. That even our obedience adds nothing to him. Praise God. His love for us is, is without reservation. Amen. Whether we obey him or not, he loves us. Praise God. But we now see him as a good God. So if he gives us a choice, if, for instance, you know, we've been made emphasis on giving and other things, or even because of marriage and all that. First thing is that we, we tend to think that God, God tells us to do something to be detrimental to us because of our perception of Him. Praise God. But when we see Him as a Father, that even if we don't understand it, we know that He has an ultimate good for us. Praise God. We know that if He tells us to give, it's not so that we're going to pay you your poverty, but because He has an ultimate good for us. Praise God. So I just wanted to add that that let's have a good perception of God, a good let's, let, let's see him as who he is. As a good God. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so very, very important. In fact, what he said is here, but I think just want to talk about is here. I'm not talking about that one, like even another meeting. It's very, very key. Praise God. Um, it's like he was just you know speaking my mind. Because when you are reading the scriptures, from scripture to scripture, if you take the word grace and you replace it with the Spirit of God, it's perfect. It's perfect. You know, and um, in John, John um, 14, from verse 15, I'd just like to read. It says, if you keep my, if, sorry, if you love me, keep my commandments. 
and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And then, um, verse 21, it says, He that, okay, he that had my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And the love, okay, sorry, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and I will manifest myself to him. Now, one of the things that I think we should strive to as Christians is getting to that point where we can obey his commands. In the military structure, a command is an instant instruction that is given for that time. You're marching and they say, halt, that's a command. You can stay there for five minutes and they'll say advance. A command is shoot. A command is hold fire. But if Christ, he could have put it, if you love me, you'll keep my rules or you'll keep my laws. But he stated, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So to keep rules, it's okay. It's fine. But it's the beginning point. The higher level is keeping the commandments, which is what Pastor referred to as that personal voice that you hear. And when he gave that instruction, see what he said immediately. In verse 14, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And he says, and I will pray the Father. And that's when he said talking about the Holy Spirit, which is a clear indication that we cannot do it by our power. It is by the grace, which is the workings of the Holy Spirit. You know, and we talked about the grace of God appearing to all men. He says, it has appeared. Something can appear, but you may not see it. He says, the world cannot see it. He says, but you, you can see it. You know, so in terms of um, following instructions, whether it's generic or whether it's specific, you know, hearing God's voice, our goal as Christians should be to get to that point where we are hearing the specifics. We'll start with the general and we'll follow the general. But the goal should be to have that personal relationship where we can hear specifics. It's like having a machine gun and just shooting, 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 shooting. You waste a lot of bullets. But when you begin to hear specific, you're sniping down, you're taking down those things that matter. You're ex expending less energy. You're, there's more precision. Your little efforts will give you more results. And I think that's where God really wants us to be. That's where Jesus Christ got to. That was his point. That was Paul's, you know, that was where Paul got to. That was where most of the people who walked with God got to. So I think it's important. And one more thing I would say. In the Bible, they talked about this parable of the virgins, the five wise virgins, the five foolish virgins. What was the separating factor? Some had reserve oil. So all of them probably were in the same company, doing the same work. They were earning the same money. But some kept reserve. And when that time came, they were able to apply that oil and step into their next level. But the foolish ones, they probably were, oh, this one will come, oh, God said we should give. And they are giving, 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 giving. And when the time came where they needed that resource to help them enter into the next level, there was nothing. There was nothing. And they had to now go and do the work that they were supposed to do. And by the time they came, the door had closed. And they remained in that position. Only God knows if there was, you know, grace for a second chance. You know, so I think it's important that we get to that point where we are hearing the commandments. So that we don't waste time, we don't waste resources, and we don't waste our life. Praise God. Amen. Thank you so much. That's all right. So, are we done now? No more questions or something? I'll take one or two, then we'll pray. Praise God. This is the order of prayer. We we'll spend up to like an hour. I'll just six of us will take us like 10, 10 minutes. For uh, Pastor Lajubu will take us for 10 minutes. Elder will take us. It can, it can be prayer or word or whatever you want to do. After that, uh, number three, Brother Shizom will come. Then Pastor Tope will come after for Brother Loladi and then Pastor Daniel. Now, now, now. Pastor Tosi will now round up the meeting for us. Okay. Um, then 
the scripture that I want to read to us that's uh, first John four six. First John chapter four verse six. Say we are God. He that knoweth he that knoweth God heareth of and he that is not of God heareth not of. Then he said hereby know we that the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So I what I want to say is uh, I, I reasoned with what Brother Chisholm said the other time that I think we need to come to the point whereby we need to understand God's goodness. It, it, it's, it's a whole revelation on its own. The, another one is that we need to also understand what is the revelation in God's law. It's also a whole revelation. It will, affect, it will affect our vision. And then it will, it will help our expectation. To affect this thing. You know, Pastor was talking about weight the other time of what we do. And Pastor gave an ex- example of two men, Abraham and Jephthah. So I remember there's another man that gave like that, and that's the king of Moab, 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 27. He was actually in a war. And when he discovered that, he lost 700 men. They could not have breakthrough. The scripture says he brought out his heir to the throne. To tell us the major supply. The pastor was saying the, the, uh, if, you, if you have to look at the weight of sin, the price of sin is you know is Christ in short. So this man gave us a kind of prophet in that point. He, he actually wanted to find a breakthrough, and it was his heir. Just said he used it as a bond of So what surprised me in that scripture is that when God and, and God sees it as a, a great indignation against Israel. So I look at it. This man is somebody that is outside the covenant and was waging war with the people of God. But because of that sacrifice, you know, he sacrificed his only son, let's say his first son, it might not be his only son, but the Bible said his eldest son. The one that should be his heir and his sacrifice. So it means some of our actions. God is interested in our actions, whether whether you are born again or you are not born again. They carry one or two more. Because sometimes I see reasons why people God is interested in somebody that is lost. And the reason why he's interested in that person. And they will begin to trace their line. Don't know what their forefathers did. Has done, they just, and then it become very, very difficult to, you know, they are just finding victory to you. They are not born again, but you know, there are things that happen in their life. And because somebody did something very, very great, that has an implication over their life. I'm saying this point is that if, and I don't want to use the word ordinary again, if a conversation can actually reflect the heart of God to move ensure that something a discussion between a brother comes to pass and then begin to ensure that when the, the woman was the one that has access to the information, some people think it was, it was, she was corny I don't believe she was corny she has the information, the husband did not and then you will not blame that on anybody I said it in one of my you know, I'm just talking in our career, I said it that the responsibility of raising children and finding out God's plan for them is basically for the parent at a very tender age. So if you don't have access to information, what is God speaking about your child, you will not blame anybody for that. The woman had the information. And so God so good, he never cared to tell his husband. And to that point, the husband did not knew, knew anything about what has been spoken. There are two nations inside you, one will serve another, other. It was not revealed to him until that point. So the young man was actually acting. And you know, God was like, God made his idea, you know, just to make sure that those things really work out. But don't let us forget, I'm pointing our, our pointing our attention to the discussions we have. And I remember that scripture that every idol word that the man speaks, you will stand like this and give account of it. And it's not that you only give account of it, it might also work against you. So that is
Thank you so much. God bless you. All right. Any other? Okay. Bro, Jeremiah, I've not had your voice today. Eh? Uh, yeah, okay. It's all right. Okay. All right, uh, Femi. So, please, we... All right. So, Pastor Fred, Elijah will be up now, and we're going to take time to pray. The things you can tell us, tell us in prayer as we pray, and then we can also share one or two things, at least for the next 10 minutes. After Pastor Femi, uh, that only will be on board, then Brother Chisholm will come after that. Then number four, Pastor Topper. After Bro Chizum, then Bro Lolade after Pastor Tokwe, then Pastor Daniel will come. And then we'll end with uh, uh, that Pastor Daniel or Pastor Femi will end the meeting with us. And praise the Lord. Femi come. In the final analysis, God will come to you. Femi come. Oh. In the final analysis, God will come to you eh? in person. He will come to you in person. Thank God for this congregational stuff is to strengthen us. And so the things we teach, you know, like that, and to equip you and prepare us so that uh, when he comes, we are going to respond to him. Again, God will come to, ultimately, he will come what? In person. He will come. That's the meaning of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person spirit. If you want to write it down, you write it down. The Holy Spirit is what? Is a person spirit. He will come to you in person with the properties that are meant for you, not the ones that are meant for David. With the property defining definitive that are meant for you, he will come. And then the context of your life with the Holy Ghost, he will start staring and be staring you in those matter. Number one. Number two, we must be believing. Like, I'm saying this because of what Tokpe said. I've spoken about it in analogy before. God spoke to Adam. He expected Eve to believe what Adam is saying. He didn't come. This one now for us that are couples, or those of you that will get married tomorrow, is very, very key. God is sovereign. He's not coming and take your permission here and there. So we prepare our heart. You see, God told Adam. He expected Adam to tell Eve. And expected Eve to believe. So he didn't say, oh, Eve, okay, I told her, don't eat from this stereo. He told them. The same thing God told Mary. The other one he told the man. Now he's telling the woman. This one God told Mary. You are carrying the baby, child, and then it's of the Holy Ghost. Mary will tell Joseph. He expected Joseph to what? Believe. And if Joseph does not believe, let's join hands together. You know, you know I thought about Abby. Let's join hands together. Let's pray more. Okay, God, how are we going to do this like that? Joseph did not believe. He didn't even believe. That's why the angel came to him. Fear not to take Mary. What is in her is of the Holy Ghost. What he's saying is true. This one that you raised, the, uh, what's her name? Isaac's wife, Rebecca. Rebecca was pregnant and God met her. Two nations what? In your womb. You know? But the younger is the one that is going to carry what? The covenant. I'm sure a like, woman will tell the husband, my first son. You know that man something. My first son, you know that. Uh, no? So when it, I'm sure Jacob will have, there are some things that are not revealed to us. Certain things that are not revealed to us expressly in scripture, God expects us to pick it up by discernment. You will have told uh, this one, I said, no, he was determined to put it on what? On Esau. I'm sure God walked over time and his eyes became dim, right? You know, so can you see? He said, two nations are in your home. The younger, we serve, they are separated from the womb. The younger, will be stronger. The elder will serve the younger. Have you seen God to the woman? Then, God has to find a way to do it. Praise the Lord. So, certain times, there are things that God may not tell you directly. God might tell somebody else around you, you know, which is by discernment you pick it that this is the movement. You know, I say grace is the motion of the spirit, right? This is the motion. This motion is of God. This is the spirit moving. This is, and then you align with it. Like the psalmist said, I made haste. He said, I made haste and delayed not to obey your commandment. How can God? Somebody told the, is it, who did he say that? Where did the Spirit of God leave me and come and talk to you? Which man was that in scripture? Micaiah, Abi? Where they were prophesying, Ahab, go to war. 
And God told Micaiah came and said, This is what I saw. A senior prophet carried something and hit him in the mouth. Which way did the Spirit of God lead me and what? God is so faithful. We may want all of us as a congregation to do something, but He may come and pass it through the list of us. It is only the humble that will hear that. So sometimes you need meekness and humility to hear the voice of God. Certain things we've done within the circle that we do some work and everything. Sometimes it's one of the brethren that will come up with it. And I know that this is God speaking. So in, we must learn to put our ears deep into God, but very wide towards men. We should widen our ears to men and deepen it in God. So that the things we hear, as we can see it in God, and know that the God is speaking to us here, and God is speaking to us here. And finally, Pharaoh Neko. Jeremiah was one of the finest for, uh, kings in the Bible. In the days of Jeremiah, they say he did things that were not even done in the days of David. Jeremiah was now going to war battle. You know, Pharaoh were fighting. I know God has helped him so far and everything because, and then pride entered. Like Josiah, not Jeremiah, Josiah. Josiah was one of the finest kings. He became a king at the age of eight. One of the finest kings in Israel. The whole book of Lamentation was written to mourn Josiah. Jeremiah wrote it. The book of Lamentation to mourn King Josiah. But he did very well. That whole book. So Josiah was going to battle. Uh, no, Pharaoh was going to fight a battle that does not concern Josiah. And Pharaoh told him that God has sent God pass. To the spirit of God pass. I can talk to you, Pharaoh, and not me, Josiah. Josiah went to that battle and he died. It was an error. And Jeremiah lamented him all too. The light of Israel had been put out. So please, sir, please, let's not be giddy, 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 giddy. Hey, hey, who are you and everybody? We are in community. And then number two, God is sovereign. He can bring his voice to anywhere. In fact, in the days of the Balaam, have you seen Balaam now? He spoke to what? To what? He spoke to what? A donkey. Thank you. God bless you.